second. Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, yeah. Why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Yeah. Value came in, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate it. How they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. All right, so folks, we got uh, Adam in the house, we got Vinny in the house, we got Tom in the house, okay? Yes. Right before uh, right Tom there. was doing his uh, stand-up in front of Adam and uh, Vinny. Killing it. And they were critiquing him. I think Tom should do one of those jokes. What do you think? I, Tom, and, then, and then, by the way, it just you got to realize, I, I said for the longest time, Tom's jokes require an MBA, <laughs> but, but these mother-in-law jokes just require... <clears throat> A sense of humor. That's so it. just to kick it off, let's test. And by the way, score it. If you like it, you know, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, just put a score in the chat box and tell us how you All like right. it. Tom, start people's day with a smile. Let's see what you okay, got. Okay, everybody, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. <laughs> cool. Man, last week and a half, my mother-in-law's funeral was just horrible. The family is, we're still Terrible down. news. Oh, man. Yeah. Terrible. Sorry, Bob. It was, there were tough moments. Uh, the first part was the way she was waving her arms. It was so hard to close the casket. <laughs> we were just, um, and then later, you know, once the banging stops on the inside of the casket, it takes about seven minutes. <laughs> there's, no, there's no air in there. People that wanted to pray were just saying, man, can you just tell the band to turn it down? So it was just, Kind of a what a rough week. It was Tom. a rough day. Are you okay? Are you gonna good? be all right? I, I think I was gonna be fine. You know, it's like <laughs> okay, that's Tom jokes. All right, there we go. So what, what, you, good what, what do you Tom. say? I, what do you say? I, Zero to ten. The, I'm gonna give him an eight. Like the dedication, the set. Like uh, I thought you were gonna cry for us. I thought you because when he said that, I really thought well, you what died. I do know. Vinny, is you, Kim you know is you're pissed crack. off right now. Oh, His yeah. wife is pissed yeah. off right now with that joke. Anyways, we got some stories here to go through before we get into it. Let me just kind of give you some of the stories we gotta. Uh, Pelosi is uh, visiting Taiwan. Adam's extremely concerned. Maybe you'll give your sentiments on uh, why you're uh, worried about that. Uh, Monkeypox, 5,800 cases. I think a handful of people have passed away. New York and California has already called it a public health emergency, but uh, we'll see if other states will follow through as well. Uh, President Biden got COVID for the second time, and, and, and Trump had a nice uh, gesture, some nice words to say about it. Manchin's got some stuff that's going on here with the... Uh, what they're doing, raising taxes, and uh, a 75-mile-long building is being <laughs> built in Saudi Arabia, 110 stories high. Let me say this one more time. A 75-mile-long building. Trump would call that a wall. Like, you know, the, the, the Trump, <laughs> yeah, the wall. wall. Can you the imagine? Wall. It's a they're wall. building a 75-mile-long building. That's Futuristic crazy. skyscraper. I need to use the bathroom. I need to use the bathroom. Yeah, it's not at the end of the hall. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. We'll 80 see you in miles two later. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you in two weeks. So anyway, so that's happening. We'll talk about that. Uh, Fox News uh, owner Rupert Murdoch is cooling on Trump, reports say. Ahmed Wider, sign of discontent. They're kind of distancing themselves from Trump. We'll see. What that story looks like. Navy, on Navy Day, Putin says United States is main threat to Russia. China's shadow is looming over the U.S. this week with obviously all the stuff that's going on. Leader of Al-Qaeda was uh, shot and killed. Uh, he was killed last night, I believe. Yes? It was Zawahari. Drone strike. Yeah, yesterday's yeah. the, the – we'll, we'll talk about The number two for bin Laden. If you can pull up that story, Tyler, and prepare for it. So maybe we'll go through it. Uh, Tom's got an update for us with the housing crisis on what's going on. President Oof. Biden helped ExxonMobil score their biggest profit – uh, on record ever, uh, which is pretty impressive to see that taking place. Will Smith it, uh, is uh, you know apologizing to Chris. Maybe we'll have some thoughts on that. Amber Heard is selling her $8 million home if you guys are interested to pay off her debt with Johnny Depp. And then uh, a few other things that's going on here as well, which we'll talk about. Apparently Prince Charles accepted $1.2 million from Osama bin Laden. Family reports claim this is an insider story. Tiger Woods is eventually now a billionaire. He would have been one much sooner, but he's finally a billionaire. And, uh, you know, that the Zelensky Vogue publicity kind of misfired and it backfired on them. But, Tom, why don't we start off? Give us an update on what's going on with real estate. I'll read one of the stories and then I'll turn it over to you. Uh, one, one thing is Facebook and a, a top U.S. economist fact checked by Facebook for stating the country is in a recession. OK, so this is a top economist. He says he thinks we're in a recession 
And Facebook comes out and says, yeah, no, it's not really in recession, and they fact check it. So let me read this entire story to you. Hmm. On Thursday, the stock economist fell victim to Facebook fact checkers when he stated that the United States is in a recession following the release of the GDP report, which showed negative growth for the second consecutive quarter, the standard definition of an economic recession. We live in an Orwellian hellscape. F- Facebook is now fact checking anyone who questions the White House's word games about the definition of recession. Phil Magnus wrote on Twitter, a researcher and educator with the American Institute for Economic Research. How wild has it been that an economist is being fact-checked by Facebook? Tom, what do you think about that? Well, I, I think right now we've got the tech companies. What are they scared to death of? They're scared to death of congressional hearings, and so they're trying to play nice with Washington. And I call this a softball from the tech from Thanga, right? This is just a softball. They're coming out there and saying, oh, we're not really in a recession because the White House said we're not really in a recession, and they're trying to play nice. Remember, Facebook was the odd man out after the election. Facebook took the heat and criticism from the DNC. Well, you basically let Trump and let Russia, you were the guy, you were the ones that weren't really watching your front yard. Remember all those criticisms of Facebook? So I think Facebook, this is nothing more than Facebook takes a zero-risk thing of creating a headline of coming back and saying, oh, Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we kind of agree. You know, there's uh, there's no recession here. And that's just ridiculous. Everybody who's looking at all the statistics that have been used for 50 years, this, the technical statistics are out. We're in a recession. And by the way, just ask anybody who's at the supermarket what's going on. Right. I think it's pretty simple. It's, uh, this is Facebook. This is their they're trying to make nice. Vinny, what do you think about it? I just, I, I, I just think people are, are just out of touch. And the fact that we let them get that powerful, it's, it's just it's nuts, and it's not going to stop. And then, and then November's coming, so it's going to get even. F- I can't wait. I can't. Let's play devil's advocate. It. Let's play devil's advocate. Yeah. Is there anything wrong with that, Adam? Is there anything wrong with Facebook fact checking an economist saying he thinks we're in recession right now? So, just so we're clear, the the economist was saying that we're in a recession, and the, Facebook. The economist was saying we're we're in a recession because of two quarters in a row of yeah. GDP being down. And Facebook comes out and says, no, we're not in a recession. You know, fact checking and saying it's not necessarily the definition. I just, I don't understand the moving of the goalposts for, I, I think I believe it was you that posted a clip of Bill Clinton sitting down. I'm glad with, you yeah, said okay. that. Can you pull up the Bill yeah, Clinton clip from 2001? It. Yeah. Wow. So watch I, this. I don't like the moving of the goalposts. If something's a Remember recession by definition, just watch call this. it what it is. Here's yeah, what Bill Clinton said in 01. Debate. It's the economy. Sitting stupid. next to a man named George. So, President, what do you think about a recession? Well, a recession is two quarters in a row of negative growth. I don't think we're going to have that. But we couldn't keep up 5% growth a year, you know, forever. So most of the, I think 49 of the 50 blue chip uh, forecasters think that growth will be 2.5% better next year. We'll keep on the corner low. And, uh, but I think there'll be things to be managed. He'll have economic challenges, and uh, you ought to give him a chance to meet them, if not try to figure it all out in advance. I does it look like a guy that that just hooked up with? Look how happy he looks, and look how shitty George Bush looks. He was definitely he was hooking up with Monica at this point, right? Uh-huh. Look how happy he looks. That's the guy that's getting late, not from Hillary. But look at that. Look at the look at the grin. <laughs> this must no, have been. That's the guy that what? had two very rough years going into this. Remember, this was twenty one years. Yeah, ago. this was after he was impeached. But this was so happy. I assume this was right at the transition from the to the in two thousand yeah. to the yeah, George yeah. Yeah. Transition. Yeah. Yeah. President. Okay. Transition. Right. Exactly. So in January. That's my guy, by the way. I mean, he's just, look at how happy he getting blowjobs or not. He I don't really care. care. No, Do I don't care. He's happy. He looks Do like he's thing, a happy Bill. guy. He was smooth, man. I got to tell you. But anyway, get to your to your initial point. He said it then. I will say it again. If by definition a recession is two quarters of negative GDP growth, yeah, it is what it is. Now I will say that it wasn't disastrous GDP. Would have just come back at point uh, nine, negative point nine. So it's not. You know, it's not crumbling, but yeah. by definition, we are in a recession. Yeah, but, Democra- but Pat, Democrats on the recession changing. side, Adam, but on the inflation side, I think people no really doubt. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. but it's not. But that's inflation is right. not a recession. But right? Pat, it's that, just by GDP. It just seems like the left is they're changing definitions well, on that. everything. The economy is not run in reverse at a horrifying rate, but it is. Mm-hmm. It is a recession, but is it one of the worst recessions on record? Not yet. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But inflation is is rough on the average person, and that's what's. Sucks. So I was having a call yesterday with, you know how they say, if you want to find out what's going, you know, whether there's a recession or not, you go to what, you know, a few different places. By the way, I love what Manchin said in an interview with, uh, 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 what's the guy from uh, Fox News, the guy that Brett always Bear. has Manchin, Brett Bear. Yeah, he yeah. said, mm-hmm. he says, look, uh, you know, uh, 17 uh, Nobel laureates said 
that inflation was transitory, you know, and look what happened to them. And these are 17, you know, mm-hmm. Nobel Prize uh, laureates that are talking about this. Who still have and jobs with think tanks. Who still have jobs, but they got up and they said, no, this is transitory. You don't have to worry about it. And this word transitory. Yeah. We, we, listen, there's a few words we learned in the last 12 months. Okay. One is transitory. We learned about entanglement. We learn about, there's a few words that the definitions forever change. Right? Mean, and woman and woman doesn't mean woman. You can't, they can't even certain, say what woman certain, is. Certain words. Be just They're really, gone. But and Kamala Harris, border doesn't mean border. I could be a thousand miles from the yeah. border. Yeah, <laughs> we've but, been to the border. We yeah. learned about the word insurrection. I wasn't familiar with that word <laughs> Not, a year so, ago. Yeah, doesn't even know what that means. But insurrection. But, but the point is, the point is, with the you, you were talking about what you were saying a, a, a minute ago. You're saying uh, uh, what point were you making? You were saying there's inflation. There is a GDP growth. GDP growth. Well, you were saying something that well, prompted yeah, me to well, talk about agreeing mansion. With Adam, agreeing with it with Adam, it was that the recession is not like the worst on record yet, but but certainly inflation is hurting the average person. Mm-hmm. I was talking about that, and before what I was talking about was Facebook that they were really trying to do a make good with the U.S. government, and now and I think they're even walking that back. Yeah. Anyways, look if if these the way to judge to see if anything's happening to the economy is through shopping. Through 99 cent stores, which, by the way, these 99 cent stores right now are being full again. There's a story on it, which we'll read about here in a minute. This is going to sound funny, but strip clubs, uh, you know, additional places people go to. You you can ask a lot of interesting folks Mm -hmm. how money is being spent. You can talk to people who are getting tips. You can talk to a lot of the Are people being a little bit tighter? I talked to one of the top uh, baseball card guys yesterday. The baseball card industry had a Nationals this last week. And when the Nationals happened... People show up from all over the place to go to the Nationals. It's like the NBA All-Star game happens once a year. They had it this last week. They had some of the biggest cards on there. One of the cards right now that's on sale on Heritage Auctions, they just reached out to me to see if I'm interested. It's going to be a, it's a Mickey Mantle 52 tops SGC 9.5. Uh, starting bid was at $5 million. They're estimating this card's going to go between 9 to $15 million bucks. Okay, By the way, Heritage card. Auction, Pat is interested. I don't know. Is if it, the, one of, <laughs> is it one of this the This is something man- I assume you're interested yeah, in. Yeah, I am interested in is it, but I, I don't know if I'm going to go that high for that card. Is this one of the mantles? Or this is one of the mantles. There's four cards of man. There's three yeah. PSA 10s. There's one SGC 9.5. This is one of them. And the guy that's selling it, look when he's selling it. Look when he is selling it. If he would have sold it a year ago, he would have gotten a few million dollars more than he would get it right now. So he's off in a market by about a year. The card market is down 20 to 50 percent. Mm. Okay, let me say this one more time. The card market is down twenty to fifty percent, which means guys were paying five hundred thousand dollars for a card last year. That card's going to go for three hundred thousand dollars this year. Yep. Okay, guys were spending thirty-two thousand dollars on a basic PSA ten LeBron James card. Today it's going for sixteen thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars. So that's Damn. a big difference. Those are some of the stuff that you're noticing. But by the way, it's still early. I mean, if you look at uh, what's going on with the mortgages, we have record-breaking equity right now. Okay, people are still sitting on record-breaking equity. Right. The challenge is with the folks that are sitting on record-breaking equity, most people are trying to sell their house for a price that will not sell today. So you may think, what is really equity? Think about what equity, what is really equity? It's like a price on the stock market that goes by, and if, unless you do something today, it's just a price that's going by so, on the so you, so, so, so you know how... Unrealized gains, dude. Like six, that's exactly right. It's six, like watching a ticker. For it's your like house. when a, when a guy owns a few hundred million dollars mm-hmm. on paper right. of a company, which I know a couple guys like that. When you own yeah. a couple hundred million dollars on paper, yeah. and then that's converted to cash, there's a big difference between the Why are you between, <laughs> between because it's just <laughs> like, there's a big difference between the paper and the cash, yes. right? So so a lot of people that are like, well, I got four hundred thousand dollars in equity. I got three hundred thousand dollars in equity. I would probably say the best bet if you got equity right now is uh, try to refi. Okay, try to refi. Try to out. refi. Try to re- now try not try to refi. Try yeah. to see if you can get. Now, obviously, don't go like for the race. Figure out a way if you can get a home equity line of credit and sit on the sidelines with that. If you can do something, because mm-hmm. if you can, then it's true equity. If you don't, it's just you think you got equity. We're not going to know. What are people willing to pay for that mm-hmm. house? Exactly. If a person was willing to pay a million dollars for it last year, is it nine fifty mm-hmm. today? Is it nine hundred? Is it eight fifty? What's that number? We don't know. So I think we're still gonna figure out the next three, six months what is going to really happen. Every month, the one thing about winning and losing, okay? When you're winning, you know, and you win for a long time, you think you're gonna win forever. And you're not. Okay. The thing about losing is what? When you're losing for a long time. <laughs> 
<laughs> you think you're going to lose forever. Yeah. And you're not. Shit can turn very quickly, good and bad. So if you're overly, overly optimistic, maybe drink a little bit of paranoia. You know, it may not be bad for you to get yeah. a little paranoid. And if you've been losing a little bit too much, maybe it's good you go buy, read, buy the book, uh, Norman Vincent Peale, The Power of Positive Thinking, mm-hmm. and uh, have a drink or two of uh, positive thinking, see what it does for you. But regardless of what's going on, uh, we don't really know exactly what's going to happen with the market in the next three to six, 12 months. We just know the numbers indicate this is not good. Well, Bill Gates says success is a lousy teacher. And that every time, every now and then, if you have a, a setback on a product launch or something, it's actually a good teacher. He didn't wish for that, and he was a bit of a tyrant when things didn't go well. But he's absolutely right. Success is a lousy teacher. But I think there is an exception to your rule. Uh, fans of the Detroit Lions are not convinced that losing never ends. So we'll just... Yeah. <laughs> Same thing for the Jets. By, by the way, about a month ago, when, we, when you really started seeing some of the signs of this recession, it could have been prior to that, you kind of give a message to the audience out there, like, guys, pump the brakes on buying luxury goods. Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Prada. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, let's stop buying the bags. Like, you know, you, you give a warning uh, to our, our gentlemen out there. You know, tell the wives maybe we won't do this, right? Um, you know, you put up... Tyler, is there is this ironic you have this up right now? The crypto collapse has flooded the, mar- yeah, well, the market just, with Rolex and Patek. Exactly. Yeah. So I actually had a conversation with a good buddy of mine who's like the watch guy in Miami. Shout out to my boy Jake. If you need Rolexes, like he's the guy, right? Uh, and I actually text him. I was like, I just want to check. Like he's my boy. He's getting married soon. I'm just checking in with him. I said, what's the state of the watch market? What do you see? Because the guy's made a freaking killing. Over There's the last no way years. you're buying a high-end watch. We'll see about that, PBD. Um, but he, I said, what's the, the stock, uh, what's the status of Watches the, of the watch market? You know, is it correlated with what you're seeing in crypto and real estate in yeah. the stock market, yeah. which is obviously taking a big hit? <clears throat> he says, quote unquote, the watch market is more of an indication of a correction. First, it's the first luxury yep. good to weaken. The first. All right. I saw this at the beginning of March and I've adjusted accordingly. It's not someone, it's not something someone needs. So it's the first to go. That's right. So he's starting to see it basically what you yeah. recommended shedding this excess uh, luxuries from your life to slim down, essentially, what he's saying. Yeah, and by the way, the the, the one of the uh, uh, Daytona watches, the one of the Rolexes, went up from $35,000 to two forty dollars during the pandemic. It's down to one ninety. dollars Still, it's from thirty. Give me those numbers yeah. again. 35. It went from thirty five dollars yep. to two forty. dollars It's down to one ninety dollars today. Still winning. Okay. It's still down. It's still one ninety. But it was forty five from thirty five to thir- two forty to one ninety. It's and that's still one ninety four months. Yeah, in twenty four months. Wow. This watch was uh, it's it's uh, it's a, it's a it's a different economy. We're gonna find out that what's gonna happen with uh, mm-hmm. people spending again. Like the point is, there are so many markers. Like you know how what do they say? You know, if you if your uh, uh, left side of your chest hurts, you start having certain feelings in your left arm and your left leg. What sign is that? It might it's be a having stroke a stroke or a heart okay, attack. Okay, so it's a stroke Correct. or a heart attack. Okay. Angina. Hey, it, it, what'd you say? <laughs> Angina, right? Oh, you're, I thought you said something. <laughs> Not what I heard. No, 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 no. I was like, wait, wait a minute, where the, what? Where the hell's your brain at right now? China, no, no, no. It's a what sign you that you may you sound have like a uh, Trump saying China. What was that? Sorry about that. Sorry about that. No, no. Angina. Okay, so but but the point is, the point is like you know you know how you come home you eat you drink a lot okay if you drink a lot of alcohol mm-hmm. and you eat a lot of pizza and you, you know what are you gonna feel like in the morning when you wake up shit Stomach over okay over. listen if Drowsy. you if you, bad fuel bad engine if you go drink six cups of coffee except if your name is Mario, Mario how should you feel I was afterwards say that's his yeah, guy. crashing yeah like, crashing right the, the weirdest thing about this economy is there are so many indicators that are showing towards what should happen. Mm-hmm. That we're not going to know if it's going to happen or not. This is this is the thing about this economy today. That's very weird. That's got everybody confused because nobody really knows exactly what's going to happen. Even with that, even with you not having a clue what's going to be happening, your job is still to figure out your own prediction and preparing for that, mm-hmm. and then persevering through, through these bad times. No matter what's going on, yep. you have to make your own set of predictions. Anyways, okay, so Tom, uh, uh, home home prices, housing, anything we need to know with housing. Yeah, I think, but people, if you're trying to sell right now, 
and you have to sell, let's say your job is moving and you're looking at potential recession, you're looking at things happening and you're looking like you got to move right now. You, I think you just need to be realistic with what you do at that house because we're seeing houses. I was just scanning markets and not just South Florida where we are down here or Dallas. I was scanning like Phoenix. I was scanning Atlanta, you know, and kind of Northern areas of Atlanta where people live and houses are on the market for a while. And I noticed that people haven't moved the price down, but I'm looking at houses that look perfectly reasonable. You, you understand housing, but they haven't moved the price at all. And I'm then, then I look at Zillow, you can flip it over to recent sales. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, these people either need to get realistic about the price or maybe they're under the loan and the financing underneath. They can't sell at the lower price. Otherwise they have to, <clears throat> they'll be underwater. They'll be saying? underwater. Contribute. If you have to go right now to another market, you need to get out and be realistic of what you can get out. And I hope you're not upside down on, on that. But the, and the other thing is just statistically looking at this right now, we've got a decline in home sales that's accelerating. It was 3% decline. Now it's 5% decline, 5.4% decline. I think that the, the, we're seeing the demand run up a curve right now. In other words, the, the, the change in demand is getting, is accelerating at a rapid rate. Remember at the beginning of the year, gas went like 350 national average, 363 mm-hmm. national average, 375 national average, and all of a sudden it went to five. Remember that? It was yeah. a yeah. big jump. That's the same thing. If you're listening and you're considering moving home, that's the same thing will happen with housing demand. It drops 3%, it drops 5%, and all of a sudden the report comes out that it's dropped 15%. So if you got to sell your house, you got to roll right now. If you're thinking about buying a house right now, I, I wouldn't do it. Number one, your underlying mortgage is going to be higher. Mm-hmm. And number two, I think you got to wait for those, um, the artificial equity, I call it, you know, as a result of $2 trillion pumped into the economy, has inflated housing prices artificially. And we got to wait for those to settle back down. So if you're looking to buy right now and you're in even something close to a reasonable uh, <clears throat> lease, hang with the reasonable lease and look next summer to buy. I want to read something here from a Moody's chief economist. So you know how Moody's, they don't have a, you know, they're, they're just kind of like giving you what they think it is. And FYI, guys, whatever experts are saying right now, take it at face value and do whatever you want to do with it. But you got to hear both sides. Here's what he's saying. Mark, mm-hmm. Housing correction is dead ahead. Warns Moody's chief economist, Mark Zandi. Here's how he sees things playing out over the next several months. This is a Yahoo News story. Existing home sales showed a 5.4% decline in June from May. But prices remain elevated, according to the National Association of Realtors. The median sale price of existing homes in the U.S. set a new record high of 416 in June, marking a 13.4% increase from a year ago. Yet for those continuing to watch these rising home prices, Chief Economist Moody's anal- analytics Mark Zandi warns that a correction could be dead ahead. Mortgage rates continue to climb as interest rates rise further, with some forecasting in short-term rise of three and a quarter on a 30-year fixed rate loan. Mortgage rates are now sitting at about 6%. As these rates rise, mortgage payments can be several thousand dollars higher Then they were a year ago, Zandi says. Mm -hmm. And this loss of affordability, exactly why he sees a correction in the near future. If we stay around six, I think that the market will adjust and will eventually get that correction. If it goes much higher, then we'll get a more significant pullback in the housing market. This is what I'm talking about. So you have a 5.4% drop in demand and the interest rates are coming up, yet the prices are staying flat. Do you remember the big short? And there is a two-week period on Wall Street where they talked about why haven't the mark-to-market, remember, why has the bond insurance gone higher and this gone higher, but the underlying haven't. And when it did, it did suddenly. So you're seeing the demand drop and the rates go up while prices are holding steady. Those prices are under stress because of the interest rates and because of the demand dropping. And we're going to, I agree with this guy. I think dead ahead, you're going to see a sudden drop in the purchase. It's, and I think it's going to be slowly then suddenly. Mm-hmm. Let me just say something. I, I think um, we talk about the importance of diver- diversifying where you get your information. We talk about that in regards to politics all the time. We do say, hey, if I watch something on CNN, I'll also flip over to Fox. I don't watch actual TV. I'm talking about YouTube. I'll watch clips on MSNBC, mm-hmm. you know, CNBC, M- MSNBC, Fox, CNN. Uh, the whole, the whole lot, the whole gamut to get a variety of opinions, and then yeah, I can decide for myself. Much is the same where I, how I view my financial advice. So, 
There's gonna, like if you only got your advice from realtors, what are realtors going to tell you? It's a great time to buy. Can, of it's, course, things of are always going to yeah. go up. If you're if you're only interested in the stock market, you know, of course you need a financial advisor. Of course you need someone to manage your money. Of yeah. course you need to be reinvesting. Of course you need to buy the. Of course, like if you're only talking to somebody who does crypto, it's like Bitcoin's going to the moon. How do you know? Yeah. You got to get it on Bitcoin. You got don't yeah. get don't now get it's cheap. Don't now get, cheap. Now, get now. You got, so like <clears throat> it's just. Depending on where you get your news is what you're going to hear. So yeah. it's important to kind of hear a, a, a variety of sources so you're not influenced to going down what someone else wants you to to do because yeah. it benefits their bottom line. Yeah, I can't tell you how many realtors I get. Interesting. Like I'm not a big real uh, net real estate guy, although I invest in REITs. You're familiar with REITs, right? You can own real estate without actually having to get your hands dirty. I'm a big fan of that. Okay. Anytime that I do something here on the PBD podcast where I'm like, look, I think kind of buying for most people is a little overrated. Hold on. Shocker alert, depending on where you're at in life. Mm -hmm. So if you're young, if you're single, if you're flexible, if you want to have mobility, if you don't, you talked about if you're living in Phoenix, maybe you're moving to Austin, maybe you move to Miami. I don't know where I'm going. Stay flexible. Like this guy just came from California. The first thing I said to him is like, you've been here about 15 fucking minutes. Rent. Don't buy right rent. now. Just rent. Okay. <laughs> almost, yeah. But at the same time, there's certain people that have families, they have school districts, they have, you know, they want to be in a sense of a community. They're not moving anywhere for five, 10 years. Cool. Bye. So, but it's always the people that are like Joe Blow Real Estate, Bill, you know, Realtor. They're always like, you don't know what you're talking yeah, about, exactly. bro. It's like by your Instagram name, I can already tell you that you're not going to want to hear what I have to say. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. you're Bill Realtor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Johnny Mortgage Guy. What do you expect to say when someone talks shit about your marketplace? Yeah. That's like Pat and I are in the insurance world, right? So there's a lot of people that say, you know, they're termites. Don't buy, don't buy universal life. Don't buy IUL. It's a waste of money. Buy term, invest the difference. How many times have you heard that? Dave Ramsey always talks about that. Yep. So, but at the same time, if you interview a million different insurance agents, they'll tell you the benefits of buying permanent insurance rather than term, right? So just be very careful where you get your information. I like that. Here's what I took from it. Diversify the content you consume. Kai. Of course. Diversify the counsel you're getting on financial advice. Diversify it. I don't think that's a bad. I think that's actually very good counsel uh, being given to everybody that's listening to this. Uh, let me let me give a couple things about comments that people made. One, a guy just said Scott Rodriguez, I believe, was the one that said this. Uh, Scott Rodriguez said, "Pat, my wife and I were in Vegas this past weekend, and we love eating at Cut in the Palazzo, normally packed and sold out. It was completely empty on a Friday night. Oh, damn! And that's the <clears throat> cut." Okay, bum, 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 bum. and then he says, "I'll see you in Vegas. I'm gonna be there next week." Okay, so Paul, I believe Cove Twelve X Twelve. I think his name is Paul. I hope it's it's very hard to pronounce whatever that is. But sold my home this this time last year. Sold the home for way more than it's worth. Renting now, waiting for the market to collapse. If it does or doesn't, I position myself well. Good, Good for you. For you. What's yeah. that guy's name? Uh, Paul something. Yeah, whatever. Paul, shout out to that guy. Yeah, Paul, shout out you to are. that guy. And Bill Pat, Realtor. And Pat, you guys were talking about earlier time. I think, I think it was Pat and you. You guys were talking about you know the signs and what you're looking for. I mean, you guys, I'm going to be honest, made one or two better decisions in me in life. So you guys are a little <laughs> bit ahead of me. But you know what some of the signs are for people like me? There's a 99 cent store. I, I walk um, Lauderdale by the sea. I walk in every single... It's a 99 cent store, right? Yeah. Everyone has a sticker now that says $1.25, $1.20. Oh, it's wow. changed. That's when you're. Uh, that's when I was like, "Wait a minute! The dollar store's gonna have to change its name. Inflation. The dollar and twenty five. And the guy said it's not going back ever. Yeah. <laughs> so is that where over. you got? Uh, is that where you got that shirt? Yeah, the shirt and the oh pants. Oh my What? Well, yeah. They sell shirts now at the, at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> it's a great deal. <laughs> what, dude? Well, not gonna hate on a good buy. Yeah. Why not? But yeah, I mean, t take a look at this. this is a Yahoo. St Go ahead. Yahoo. Finance no, this story. is a story that's probably near and dear to your heart. You always talk about your father. Yeah, your the dad was in the ninety nine cents. Yeah. So. Yep. That's how he made his millions. In Inglewood. In one one dollar at a one time. Dollar at Literally. Time. <laughs> Inflation has dollar stores discount supermarkets see an increase in high income shoppers. Wow. High income shoppers. Discount shop? supermarkets see an increase in high income shoppers. Well, Yahoo shit. Finance story. How the hell do you know if they're high income yeah. shoppers in the first place? Like do they say <laughs> right. uh six dollars and twenty eight cents? By the way, what'd you make last year? Two twenty eight. Okay, sounds good. Go ahead. They're like how many birthday yeah. balloons can yeah. fit in this Maserati? How the hell do they know that? Uh, they, uh, according to consumer price index, CPF figures of food. At uh, home index rose 12.2 percent in the past year, and the overall food in index increased one percent in June, bringing the latter category total increase to 10.4 for the last 12 months ending June. This represents the largest 12-month increase since the period ending February of 1981, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. These figures are also higher than the overall inflation rate, which stood at 
9.1%. In turn, 90% of Americans say they are concerned about food prices. Guys, that's a big number. 90% of Americans say they're concerned about food prices, according to a Harris Poll sur- survey. And by the way, this is Yahoo Finance. It's not Fox or CNN. Uh, uh, the Wall Street Journal reported that the average spending on grocery products at discount chains increased 71%. Let, let, me, let me read this one Holy more time to you. Shit. Did you guys read that? Wall Street Journal reported that the average spending on grocery products mm-hmm. at discount chains increased 71% from October yeah. of 2021 to but, June of 2022. Exactly. According to analytics from InMarket and our in-house uh, uh, investigative journalists validated that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dollar stores, discount supermarkets, uh, see shopper search. This is aligned with survey for uh, Numerometer, which showed that inflation is indeed changing. Shoppers have as dollar stores are seeing more high income shoppers, which is described by people with income greater than $80,000 who are also switching to save. The numerator survey found that dollar store sales are up by about 14%. And uh, as the cost of everyday goods continues to rise, consumers are shopping around to find value. This is Eric Belcher, CEO of Numerator. Uh, many of these shifts include high-income households trading down uh, to dollar stores are unexpected. Huh. Very, very and, interesting. And Pat, I don't know if you, uh, you guys, have, when's the last time you guys went to a dollar store? Be honest. Tom, when's the, you, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Listen, <laughs> go, have you ever seen the food, the groceries in there? No. It's, dude, There's have no you ever heard of there. a fucking 99-cent store farm? Have you ever seen? Dude. The banana, everything is just disgusting. But I mean, people are. I, I've never bought food there, but it's not good. I didn't is know that, that they that, sold food. Is that there. Alfonso Ramirez's baseball team? Mira, plan, just plan plan call that man, por favor. <laughs> por favor. Yeah. It's not good. Yo, the food there is not good. Like, even the frozen food is like, but, but like weird but, pockets. But by the way, it's, it's stuff like this 71% up. That's so, cool. so, so do you remember like when you're like, uh, you know, uh, uh, people are buying into Bitcoin, they're buying into crypto, and then it's up 71%, up 88%. Like, oh, shit, people are buying these yeah. types of things. When it goes 71% higher, eight months later at 99 cent stores, that's not a 5% increase or 10% mm-hmm. increase. Something's going on. Pay attention to buyer habits, the spending habits. The way buyers, shoppers are going to 99 cent store, there's either fear that they have that they want to save their money or something's going on with their income, their personal lifestyle that's causing 99 cent stores to be up 71%. That's crazy. Remember when Zoom stock went from what, 70 bucks to 500 bucks? What's it back down to? A hundred bucks. Yeah. It's okay. Still, it's still good. So even in the last five years, the stock went from seventy to a hundred. Yeah, we looked but at that a week ago. That's it's right. We twenty twenty two percent up before and after but pandemic. Tom, Zoom went from seventy to five hundred. <laughs> yeah. If you were on the correct side of the ride, you made a ride. So if ninety nine cent stores are up seventy one percent, ask yourself why. Ask yourself yeah. why. Why that is. Do you have any thoughts on this or no? Uh, it's been a while since I've shopped at a 99 well, cent a mi- store, but I'm not judging right anyone now. that does. And they're, I mean, it's packed with stuff. And it's just, What do you just buy when you're there? Toilet paper, foil, cleaning stuff, like the toilet stuff. Zigzag. Like that, it's all zig- yeah. everything like that, bro. That's if you want. I wouldn't recommend getting food, but if you're going to go to the dollar store, the Dollar Tree, 100% all the you know mm-hmm. paper plates, if you want to throw a party or balloons, every, that's the place to go to. Just I wouldn't, I wouldn't get yogurt or some shit like that or meat. Not from the dollar store. Can we yeah. change it up and go to Will Smith's story? Because I know you got you got thoughts on this, Tom. So Will Smith addresses Oscar slap in a new video. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if we can play this. I don't think we can play this, Tyler. So uh, 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 before the YouTube folks show up, I don't know if we can play this or not. But let me read this to you. So Will Smith. Will Smith is deeply remorseful about slapping Chris Rock at the Academy Awards in March. Smith posted a video on his Instagram account on Friday that began with the words on screen, it's been a minute. I was fogged out by that point, Smith said. It's all fuzzy. I've reached out to Chris. And a message that came back from his campus, he's not ready to talk. And when he is, he will reach out. So I will say to you, Chris, I apologize to you. My behavior was unacceptable, and I'm here whenever you are ready to talk. Smith also apologizes to Rock's mother, family, and his brother, Tony Rock, who has uh, stared in 2007 sitcom, start in 2007 sitcom All of Us, which was created by Smith and his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. Adam, since this is more in your wheelhouse, what are your thoughts on this? Man, Will, I mean, what a fall from grace this guy's had. I mean, the even the the apology tour that he's on right now yeah. was just sad. There's nothing manly about Will Smith anymore. This is fucking Will Smith, well, French, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Men in Black, yep. Independence Day, yep. like the, the pursuit of happiness, the list goes on. 
And all he's doing is crying and apologizing these days yep. and making amends for his wife banging some dude. Dudes. Uh, okay. Plural. Dudes. Uh. Plural. So dudes. I, I, the, number one, how long ago was the slap? Two months ago? No, the slap? Way, but wow, well, four, five, four months, four months four ago. Months. No, I was still in LA. No, okay. it, was, it was May. I a think. few months ago. Yeah. So what took so long? And this is the best you can come up with. I'm just so disappointed with what I'm seeing with Will Smith. He needs to get some red pill in his life. Yeah. I okay. So he too. needs to get like. There's only remember, one thing he can do to change his reputation. What's that? It's only one thing he needs to bitch do to slap change. someone else and no, not apologize. He needs to divorce. Yep. Jada Pinkett. 100 agree That's with you. That's the only thing he can do to yep. change his reputation. And I'm telling you right now, because look. I'm t I've seen men who were mm. man's men, yeah. okay, date a woman, and gradually that woman changed the man, mm -hmm. okay? I read a quote a long time ago that was given to me before I was getting married, and this is what the quote said. And uh, I was thinking about getting married in a different time. I wasn't ready, and the, the guy that gave me the counsel, I'm like, yeah, this is not a good time for me to get married. Quote was, uh, women marry men hoping they change, and they don't. Men marry women hoping they stay the same, and they don't, mm -hmm. okay? Women change, man stays the same, unless if a man allows a woman to change them into who he is now today because now you're scared. You're walking on eggshells. And when a man is in that web, they rarely know they're in that web, and they get destroyed. They, do, they lose their DNA. And eventually, you're in so deep that you're convinced mm -hmm. you're supposed to be this person. It's treacherous to be in that situation. I think there's only one thing he can do. If he announced tomorrow that he's filing divorce and he's sick of it, hey, love you, we had a good run, but I got to move on and I got to go mm -hmm. live my life, I will tell you three, six, 12 months later, everything about his reputation would, would change and people would say, finally, he's standing up for himself. Yep. That is the only mm -hmm. way for him to be out. 100%. His fans will, will come back. Will, the ones that he lost will come back. Will either needs to go be by himself a little bit and do some soul searching, and I'm sure he's not going to be by himself. I'm sure there's a lineup of plenty of people yeah, that would love yeah. to find out what the Prince of Bel-Air is up to. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, he needs to get somebody that's crazy about him that wants to be with him, yep. you know, versus the other way around. I think he was crazy about Jada versus Jada being crazy about him. I think Jada was like, yeah, I should marry somebody like Will Smith well, versus Will's like, I'm crazy about her. He's got to find somebody that's crazy about him to see what that's going to work. And, uh, and look her like. first love was Tupac, from what I recall. So that's, so all, that's completely that's, different. So you're not. So, let me ask you. And let me ask you another question. Yeah. What we haven't talked about, maybe what's the elephant in the room is Hollywood. He's as Hollywood as it gets yeah. at this point. So, like, mm -hmm. everything about him, I just feel is like, okay, what are, what are the people in Hollywood going to say? How am I going to, how well, are they going to respond to what I'm doing right now? I, I mean, what's well, my career looking like? What's that, the box office? What's the movies? Yeah. What are the, you know, the, the producers saying, the executive producers, like, everything's just very calculated, it seems. Oh, that's and he, what, and, and it, correct. You in Hollywood, that. it doesn't seem to be like, yo, I'm the fucking man. I'm dude talk shit about my wife. I bitch slap. Let me ask that you is what it let is. Let me ask you guys a question. 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 Say Jada's dating Tupac and they're married. Yeah. Would that ha If that would have happened, what does Tupac do? In this situation? Say Jada's married to Tupac. Tupac's alive. Mm -hmm. And they're together. And Jada's like, oh, I had an entanglement. What, what does Tupac do? First of all, Tupac won't do that interview. Nope. Tupac wouldn't be with her. Mm -hmm. And Jada wouldn't be able to do that to Tupac. Mm -hmm. I okay? agree 100%. But what does Tupac do? Uh, he Whatever the he, fuck he, he wants he to do. He divorces her and he, he hooks up with the I hottest mean, girl. He, uh, the hottest girl that's trending that he's going to find. Actually her think about what Tupac yeah. would do. I mean, he cuts her off. He says, thanks for, you know, thanks for all that you've done. Hey, You're out gonna, the door. We're going to take a ride with Biggie. Yeah. I'll sit in the middle. You sit by the exactly. door. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? What, 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 are you saying like he, he kills the guy? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, Tupac's not going to kill the guy. Tupac's going to make a song about it. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Tupac's going to make a song about it, but he's Called gone. up. Yeah. He's gone. You know, he's going to say, hit her up, you know, you know, because I've moved on. That's what <laughs> yeah, the name of the yeah. song is going to be, not hit him up. So is uh, there anything that Will Smith can do aside from making a song? Do, like, no, pa pa no, imagine uh, that. No, <laughs> his song ain't going to be that I'm gangster. back in Miami. Um, I'm telling you. Is there you, anything he can do aside nothing. from divorcing nothing. Jada to regain his reputation? Nothing. Zero. Nothing. nothing. Zero. Nothing. That's so, again, remember, it's yeah. my opinion. No, I get nothing. It. But if you're counseling him, you say, listen, buddy. I know you've and, had a good run no, with Jada. And, Time to cut it off. And can I say one thing, Pat? You know, you guys know what that was that 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 well lit production of him saying "I'm sorry." That's the studios. That's his agent. That's yeah. his manager. That's his publicist saying, "Listen, you're not making the movies right now. I don't know if he is or not. We're losing billions of fucking dollars because you're not 
the starring dude because to mm -hmm. be honest with you, some people don't even want to go see him right yeah. now. So that do, do you see, like point. I could or see it. he couldn't get the next deal and Ex now his publicist is like we got to do this. Yeah, because at the end of the day, which, yo, if which, you're gonna be a, a, a list and a blockbuster you know movie, they're not gonna come. Do you remember you when know? Tom Cruise had a weird moment and he gets into it, Matt Lauer on the yeah. pills, Matt, and then Matt, and Matt. then was it after that that he was jumping on Oprah's couch? He was saying, in love. I'm with, in love? I think I Were think those, it was. Big, Very remember, close. First of all, Tom was chaos. right. He was right. Tom exactly. was right. Yeah, I agree with you. Tom Cruise was right. right. Of course, what? he was right. Okay. That that interview. But let me let me okay. go back to the point you just made, and you kind of given that point about the fact that uh, uh, the publicists are like, "Hey, what are you doing? You got to get this 100%. job." And then, okay, there comes a time in your life where you're in the goat community, and this isn't this isn't everybody. Mm -hmm. Only a few people get to say this. Okay, in their space. Will Smith is in the GOAT status of his space. You know, what no he, doubt. He, he's in the GOAT community of what he did, okay? Who gives a shit what your publicists say? Who cares what the fans say? Who cares what anybody says? Bro, you killed it, dog. Like, what are you <laughs> thinking about? Like, do you realize? Forget all of us. Forget everything. What the hell do you want to do and are you happy inside? Make mm -hmm. that decision. Stop listening to freaking publicists or anybody, including us, whatever we're saying. Make the he knows what the right decision is. Make that decision mm -hmm. and move on. And stop acting. Because that's an act when he got up yeah. and made that video with Chris Rock. You're acting like um um you know how they say you should never do ums and acting, it's acting like, like um, um like, I'm not, you know, um I mean I um uh, you're like you're trying to be natural. You're not natural. We can tell you're not you're acting, and it's it's yeah. very uncomfortable to even watch this. Take a break from everybody freaking go hang out with monks for a month mm -hmm. do something away from everybody mm -hmm. and decide what you want to do because the world loved the will who was will nobody likes a guy that's acting like trying to be somebody else that the publicist or the media or the market or hollywood wants you to be no one's turned on by that nobody take a page out of this tate guy that's mm -hmm. going viral. Why do you think he is going viral? Because he doesn't give a shit what you think. <laughs> his background, I've never done business with this guy. I don't know what his back. Everybody's asking me about what about this and what about that and what about this. I think most of the people in the world are pissed because how viral he's going and how much, you know, what do you call it? How much attention he's getting? How come mm -hmm. I'm not getting it? The algorithms are favoring him. He's got a better strategy than you. Ask yourself, Will, why is he doing so well? Why is he doing so Because well? he's an unapologetic badass that says what's on his mind. And, That's and, what Will Smith needs. But what do the algorithms and the world say? What do the algorithms and the world say? Keep it coming. The, the algorithms and the world says that's exactly what we like. Yeah, we like it. Yeah, yeah, just exactly. So, you, you remember you talked about uh, Will Smith going to see, hang out with monks, yeah. figuring it out. You remember uh, the movie Austin Powers? I think it was two. Where it, the yeah. whole theme of the movie was, I lost my mojo. Yeah, yeah. I can't find my mojo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he just went like on an escapade around the world to find the mojo. Yeah, it's exactly what Will Smith is missing. He just like Will Smith had that sauce that like that. Oh, yeah. uh, he's got yeah. something going on for a couple decades, and now he's just lost his mojo. That'd be Someone's such a fun help find it. Somebody edits that movie with his face on there. That'd be fucking hilarious. All right, let's so talk about I, Nancy Pelosi. I, I want to know. Everybody keeps talking about Will. Is there anything they can do to save the kids? Nobody's talking about Jaden no. Willow. What do you mean save the kids? His like, two, like the, the Willow and they're, save they're the kids. Nuts. They're crazy. They're lost. They're way out there. Far left oh, yeah, field. They are, they are bonkers. I don't, right? I don't, and they're sitting there watching this whole thing play out real time in front of the world. Right? Your mom and your dad. This whole thing's playing out. Let's say... Will d divorces Jada, right? Do you think he can salvage those? Like, I think huh. the kids are are gone. Like, I think they're crazy. I think they've been screwed having to watch this whole thing play out. Like, how does this play out for them? Because nobody's no, talking about the kids. Let, let me, they're let not me. kids anymore. Yeah, they're, no, that's they're exactly full on adults. what I was going to say. Not because four years old. My parents years got old. a divorce when I was 10, 11 years old. I don't know. How old were your parents when you, how old I was you? 20. Okay. So you were 20 years old when your parents got a divorce? Yes. When you got the news, how'd you react? About fucking time. Okay. Oh, really? Got yeah. When I when I got the, they divorced the day my parents, sister graduated high school. My, my father, yeah, my father passed away when I was nineteen, cancer, and yeah, it was just. I mean, technically, it's kind of like a. Divorce. But they never got a divorce. They never right? got divorced. Your parents she, they got a divorce or no? no? Tom, your parents are. Uh, they obviously didn't get a divorce. Okay, so you know when you're ten, eleven, and you get the news, you are devastated. It plays a very important role. Because you need a father figure. So it's kind of like shit. Now I don't have anybody that you know all that stuff. It's a mess. Okay, mm -hmm. when you're at that age. And it forces you to kind of figure yourself out. I saw my dad. I didn't see my dad for a year and a half at the refugee camp. Not once. I talked to him on the phone one time for a year and a half during that 18-month period. In the States, 
I saw him once every other week. He would come and pick me up at Virgil's, and I would go spend a day with him, right? Once every other week for eight year, for six years. And then I joined the Army. I don't see him for two and a half years. And I come back, and we live together, my dad and I, okay, to figure out a way to rekindle our relationship. And then, boom, it just we, we, we had a run. Until today, he lives with us, and it's one of the best things decisions that we ever made. At that age, yes. At this age, no. Tyler, you also got to know the following. You know the saying, whenever I go to a city and somebody's like from uh, uh, Barbados, it's like, hey, what is it like growing up in Barbados? I always love the answer they give. You know what's my favorite answer? I don't know anything different. Mm. This is the only thing I know, right? So when you're raised in a poor family, guess what's the only thing you know? Poor. Poor. When you raise a middle income, when you raise in a divorced family, that's all. When you raise with parents being together, that's all you know. When you raise going to church, that's all you know. When you're raised in Hollywood from day one that you're born and your mom and your dad are famous and everywhere they talk about them, they treat them royally, you don't know anything different. They're used to this. They're well-trained people to live the life that they live and for them... It's all art and creativity. They're going to be okay. My concern isn't them. They're going to be fine. Yeah. Well, if they were messed up, they were messed up because of the first 10 years of the way they yeah. were raised, not because of how they're going to be raised today. Well, Pat, what do you think about like Kanye's kids? I, I kind of get what your point is. Like, I've seen Kanye West's kids that's right different. now. They're walking, yeah, because they're that's young. Different. Yeah, that's yeah, different. And they're, they're, acting yeah. Like, like they're acting crazy too right now. That's different. But yeah. believe it or not, Kanye's got, Kanye is, in a strange way, he's teaching the right values and principles. In a strange way. It is what it is. Well, he's, he's aligned with uh, with God. It's, yeah. yeah, for sure. But I, number one, I just checked there. Jaden Smith is 24 years old. Willow Smith is 21. Like like Pat said, it's from zero to 10 that really shapes you. And maybe it up, up until you're a teenager. But at this point, it is what it is. I actually happen to think that the kids are very talented. Are they far left, woke, whatever you want to kind of put on them politically? Sure, have at it. But as far as talent goes, those kids are unquestionably talented. Jaden Smith has a song called Icon that is classic, amazing, awesome song regardless. Um, Willow Smith, I think, had a, uh, I wait my head back, like whatever her head, little, like when she was like 14 yeah. years old. Yeah. Beyond talented. So, But to, to Pat's point or your point, the younger you are, like Kanye's kids, whoever, like those kids are going to have very like, impressionable. Be right very now. They're, careful they're, they're, that they're to those kids. That's a different story. Yeah. That's a different but story. Will, bottom line, it's time for you to yeah. take a leap of faith and go on your own. Yeah. Hey, quick moment. I know you guys are not sports guys, but Bill Russell passed away uh, mm. yesterday. And uh, rest days. in peace. Two days ago, rest in peace, Bill Russell, to one of the greats of all time. Amen. Some call him the great. Some put him in the top five, top ten of the list. Eleven championships. Was a coach crushed it going up against Will Chamberlain for God knows how many years mm -hmm. and one of the most respectable guys in the entire sports yep. uh, a world uh, NBA of course but all sports yep. everybody respect Brady commented on this guy everybody commented on him yesterday uh, may he rest in peace if you judge goats by championships he's, he's unquestionably yeah. the greatest of all time yep. if that's how you judge uh performers athletes performances so all right let's go into uh respect. nancy pelosi's visit and the comments coming back from china and what that's looking like okay so nancy pelosi to visit taiwan despite warnings from china uh house speaker nancy pelosi is planning to visit taiwan with meetings scheduled with government officials on the self-ruled island that china claims as its own raising the prospect of increased tensions between u.s and china people whom Pelosi is planning to meet within Taiwan, have been informed for her imminent arrival. Though some details remain in flux, some of the Pelosi's meetings have been scheduled for Tuesday evening, but most are set for Wednesday, which include but are, aren't limited to Taiwanese government officials. Chinese President Xi Jinping warned Biden in a phone call Thursday that the U.S. must not play with fire on Taiwan. Those who play with fire will perish by it. It is hoped that the U.S. will be clear-eyed about this first of all how do you feel about xi jinping telling the leader of the world joe biden to to your plane with fire and those who play with fire will perish by it it is hoped that the u.s will be clear-eyed about this direct threat Direct threat. 100%. 100%. That's a threat. How do you feel about this? So, first of all, how do you feel? What should what should Nancy do? Should she still go? Uh, what do you think about the threat? And how should how should Biden handle this? I'm asking all those three different questions. I'll go to mm -hmm. you first, Adam, and then Tom will come to you next. Look, uh, 
let's let's just put politics aside. I don't care what side of the aisle you on. This is the number three person in line for the presidency of the United States. I don't care if this is Nancy Pelosi. I don't care if this is who's the last Republican Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, and who was before that, uh, Jim, John Boehner. Boehner. Yeah, whoever it is. If a representative of the United States wants to go visit Taiwan, a full-on democracy, regardless of what China says, they should be able to go. And and what kind of image or precedent would this set to the world if she was planning on making a visit and Xi Jinping says, don't go or you'll really piss us off, and they don't go? <laughs> yeah. What kind of precedent does that send to the rest of the world or especially the united states here mm -hmm. again put politics aside this is a representative of the united states of america yep. by the way you know who's co-signing on a lot of uh telling her to go a lot of republicans Which it's not weird. just it, forget 100 absolutely okay a lot yes. of republicans who are basically yes saying we don't like what china is doing this is an american issue what's happening with china china is our number one foe some may call it an enemy some may call it uh, a threat, so whatever you want to label China, and credit to Donald Trump because he made China top of the list of our frame of reference for understanding what they're doing to our country. Who did? Trump. Yeah. Okay. So I applaud Nancy for going, and if if she let's let's see what kind of ramifications happen for this. I don't know the now. What I will say, I don't know the reason that she's going. Is it a diplomatic mission? Is she there to speak with? Uh, the right. prime minister is, is there an agenda there is a trade agreement right. is it talk about defense the south china sea and and in the way i'm uh, Could be processing like this well. whatever the reason she has the the right to go visit taiwan mm -hmm. okay so i'm totally cool with this and it'll send a message i think a soft power message saying oh you don't want us to do something china go fuck yourself i'll see you in taiwan next week that's my thoughts. Tom. Well, I think Z does not want any legitimization of Taiwan or any support for Taiwan. So he wants to block that at all costs. Mm -hmm. And he is not testing the United States of America. He knows better. He is testing Joe Biden, period. He is testing Biden. And by the way, this trip with some of the agenda, this is a Secretary of State trip. This is not a Speaker of the House trip. So if there's some reason for her to be there, there's some trade agreements, industry alignments, whatever it is. Okay, I agree. If she wants to go, go. She's not like, you know, a small freshman congressman from Montana. She's the freaking sec she's freaking speaker of the house mm -hmm. representing the majority. And so she is absolutely legitimate to go. And I think what Z is doing, he is trying to draw this box around Taiwan with perception, with the UN, with everything else. I'm mm -hmm. going to do it. It's just a matter of when, and you got to get good with this. That's what he's doing with all of his actions. And he's testing Joe Biden, period. Do you think that phone call gets made to Donald J. Trump? Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Yeah, exactly. Hell so, no. so did you, oh, I thought you were going to say something else. Go ahead, Vinny, because I got, I got some thoughts. No, go ahead, some, no, I want to hear your Okay, so here's what I would say. Number one, um, I hope she goes, okay? And I hope she takes a stand and she goes. And whether it's a legacy move, she's 80-something right now, and she wants to go, and, you know, f for her to, you know, whether you agree with a person or not politically, whether she wants to make her grandkids proud or to say my grandma had the audacity and the courage to go to Taiwan during the time mm. where she was mm -hmm. threatened for her life, salute to your aspirations. 100%. Go 100%. get mm -hmm. what's yours. I respect that, especially in your 80s. I know people who are in their 60s that don't want, don't want to go 10 miles down to go <laughs> sit down with somebody. This yeah. woman's willing to get on a plane in her 80s to yeah. go to Taiwan with death threats behind it. Listen, yeah. agree or disagree, more power to you. Respect. Okay. Number two, let's talk foreign policy. Okay. For those of you that uh, thought uh, foreign policy, you know, you know how you you uh, 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 you're you're raising a family where there's food and there's bed and there's a roof above your head, and you're like, well, but we didn't have this. You know, like people say, Pat, you never played organized sports. You're massive. You're this. I'm like, dude, I was working every day after, you know, school. I went straight to Hagen. I had a job. I had to figure out a way to make money. We had no money. But, dude, you were bodybuilding. I was, but I had to figure out a way to make money. Fine. But, man, like, you grew up poor. No, nope, not by my sit. I had a bed. My mom fed me. Had a place to live. Never rained on our bed. 
totally grateful for it. Mm-hmm. Very happy. Went to the Army. Had the time of my life. Got out. Luckiest man alive to live in America. I'm very happy, right? Okay, great. When for four years nothing happens with foreign policy and you don't go to sleep with any threats, that's the best thing that happens when it does for you to sit there and say, who the hell was threatening us with things like this, Mm -hmm. okay? Do you know that phone call that Xi Jinping made? You know who made that phone call three years ago? And everybody said Trump was getting close to the North Korea leader four years ago. You know what he told the North Korea leader? Do you guys remember what he told to the North Korea leader? Rain down with fire and fury. In ways you've never seen seen before. Yep. So Xi Jinping was field trained by Donald Trump. I think so. So he took that script away from Trump and he used it on Biden. Now, why would he use it on Biden? Now, let me ask you a question. Um, you ever gone into a fight with somebody? Many times. Okay, when you do get into a fight with somebody and you feel pretty confident, what do you tell the guy when you feel pretty confident? I'm going to whoop your ass. Okay, well, you say what? Say something. Say something. I'm going to whoop your ass. I'm going to fuck say, you up. I'm, okay, perfect. Yeah. It, it, who will you not say that to? Somebody that I don't think I could beat up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so for example, let's just say you're in a, you're in a club, and you're talking to a girl, and GSP comes and starts talking to the same girl, and, and, and I know it's GSP, and you know it's GSP. Yeah, what I'm, buy, I'm GSP? buying him a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Two bottles. You say what? You say, listen, Mary, go, go for it. My it's bad. Your, I'm, I'm gay. Go with I'm gay. <laughs> I'm gay. GSP. <laughs> okay. So the point is, nobody makes <laughs> nobody nobody makes threats to anybody unless if they know. Yeah, they, they can whoop their ass. And 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 if you you do you do like you think she would say something like that to a person that they don't think they can make that threat to. No, so that means he is very confident he can make that threat 100%. to Joe Biden. By the way, it's okay. not just Trump. I don't think he says that to any of our last four presidents. Any I don't of them. think I don't think he says it to Obama. I don't yep. think he says it to. But but I don't think to he, George Bush because Cheney be like, can I blow him up? Please, yeah, exactly. please, can Cheney, I blow him Cheney up? would can be I, like, that's I? that's all it is. That's all I need. It's yeah. a threat. <laughs> nuclear deal, bomb on its war. way. Right. Yeah. So so foreign policy Dick, is a shit. Show. Here, hang on. Now watch this. <laughs> now watch this. Now watch this. Now watch this. Take take your top enemies. Okay. Everybody has enemies. You got haters. I'm not talking haters. I'm talking enemies. Please. Yeah. Okay. So what's the imagine your top two biggest enemies at the top of the leaders bulletin? Take your biggest enemies in your life you ever had. Okay. Okay. Ever. Not haters. Enemies. enemies. Direct enemies that are taking market share away from you. Mm-hmm. One day you wake up, which some of us experienced this about two weeks ago. One day you wake up. Your top two enemies unite. <laughs> oh, great. great. When you wake That's up, what you meant. When, <laughs> when you wake up and you're like, wait, what? Yep, oh. those two united. Holy yeah. shit. Okay, what did we do? Well, here's an article to read. And, okay? your, and your general defected. Ex- exactly. It's like Voltron. <laughs> so watch this here. This is an article. Today, yesterday, Russia is with you. Putin vows to back Xi in U.S. row over Taiwan. Visit. Now, go a little lower because I want to read what the China's... Za, za, uh, there's a uh, general all the way in the bottom. Keep going lower. Look for the general that's uh, named Z. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, by the way, that's the video. Let them see that video. Click on that and look what's turning. That's in Moscow. Okay. Hey, we're with you. That's in okay. Moscow. Wow. Okay, we're with you. That's a red square? That is... Is that just... Don- that, wow. Yes, we're with you. We got you. Don't worry about it. Little Keep ma- doing what you're doing. Mandarin message running around. That's Moscow, Port. Astaniko TV Tower right now. China, Russia is with you. Hardly can happen without an official approval. Context needs no explanation. Okay? So what are they saying? Now, if you go all the way to the bottom of the article above Pelosi's picture right there, Zhao uh, told a regular daily briefing, we would like to tell the United States... Once again, that China is standing by, the Chinese People's Liberation Army will never sit idly by, and China will take resolute responses and strong countermeasures to defend its sovereignty and territorial integrity. Okay, so bring it back to us on the camera uh, for us to be talking about this. All right, so Iran historically has had a reputation of saying they're going to do something and they don't to America. Mm-hmm. If you do this, we're going to do this. If you do that, we're going to do this. Like, hey, they took Hassan Soleimani and what happened? They bombed the base that nobody was at the base. Exactly. Just to say we retaliated and we are going to fight for our person. Now, Iran will take vengeance during their time. Mm-hmm. But how long that could take, we don't no. know. Well, you remember years, the threats years. they made against Trump recently? No question they about it. They said that they're trying to kidnap Trump, basically. <laughs> yeah. So, right? I'm not making yeah, this no, up. I know. Right. This You're is right. two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know. But but this is the part. This is the part that gets me thinking with this one here. There, there's a few things in life you have to be very careful with. 
if you have a reputation, everybody in life at one point made a threat that they didn't deliver. Everybody, you know, like, you know, you'll go to, uh, 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 I swear to God, I'm going to blow this place up. You're just pissed off, <laughs> yeah. right? Goes, I mean, let me say that one more time. Watch yeah. what I'm going to do. I'll never you. come back yeah. here again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See you next week. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> but I tell you, if there is one thing, like Jennifer knows one thing. I tell you, like Jennifer knows one thing. If I say we'll never come back to this restaurant again, ask Jennifer. For the last 15 years of her and I being together, look what she'll tell you. Just ask her. You've never been back. Just ask what she'll tell you. Okay. Just okay. ask. So I wanted to buy this. You can call it whatever you want to call it. I wanted to buy the sushi re- restaurant because we were in Glendale. And they said, no, the person that we were in uh, Granada Hills. You know which restaurant I'm talking about. Down the street from, don't say the name, yeah. but, but no, yeah, some people to. know what it's it is. It's a sushi spot? Yeah, it's a sushi okay, spot. Okay, okay. It's a great place. Your private chopsticks. Yeah, they had shelves. a sushi oh, named shit. after me. Now, this was 15 years ago. And I okay. love this place. Uh-huh. And I said, I would like to buy this place. And they say, I'm sorry, we can only sell it to one of our uh, our kind. I said, what do you mean? I can't sell it to you. Because humans? You mean humans? Your kind? No, no, humans? No. The, uh, Iranian. They wanted somebody to buy that's there. And she says it to my face. Wow. I, I said, I can't come back here, man. I just can't come back here, right? So restaurants. So she'll tell you, Pat, I can give you 20 restaurants that that happened to. I value service. And I because I give service, I value service in return. Okay, perfect. You can call it whatever you want. I'm very comfortable in my own skin. This is who I am. I'm comfortable with this part. In life, if you make threats and you don't keep them, people will eventually just know that you're a guy that just does a lot of talking. No one is 100% delivered under threats. Nobody's 100% delivered under threats. Nobody. Because if 100% of threats were met, we wouldn't be living today. It'd be Armageddon and this place wouldn't exist. Okay? Thank God 100% of threats have not been kept in the world. Just so you know. Okay? Having said that, if you come out this strong and your name is China and you want to be the world leader, you cannot make a threat like this and not deliver. Wow. Which means she has to know this. Biden has to know this. We have to be on alert. And we have to know this isn't a small country saying this. Mm -hmm. This isn't a billionaire saying this. This is our number one enemy in the world who wants to take over U.S. They had a vision called Made in China 2025. It was by 2025 China wanted to be the ruler of the world. When they say this, you best believe behind closed doors, everybody needs to be ready for this. So now let's flip it. So let's just say there's, there's, they're having calls behind closed doors. I want to ask you guys a question. And audience, for those of you that are listening to this, I want to hear your thoughts and your commentary. Let's now flip it. There's a meeting. Generals are sitting there. And one of the generals says, President Biden, uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi, you know, what's the RVP's name? Uh, uh, Kamala. Kamala Harris. Kamala. <laughs> hey, uh, nobody knows the VP. But so, <laughs> so if she's even in the room. So yeah. let's just say, she, hey, uh, we don't think this is a good idea. And we don't think you need to make this trip. And we need to talk to the media about telling a different kind of a story that a health matter came up or something happened. But you cannot go to Taiwan right now because China's very serious. Now, if Pelosi pulls out of this visit to Taiwan... How do you process it yourself? That's the question. Z1, and we found a reason not to go. And a weak administration, let it go. How do you see it? Uh, Well, first of all, the fact that they own us, right? Are we in debt to them more than anything? You can't. Japan is more than China. Japan is 1.1 trillion. China is 1 trillion. We're really close to it, right? But they, like, how many, just just the threats, the the fact that I think that we owe them, we can't, do we. They, they're in charge, bro. You get and so here's my question, dude, to Pat. So they threatened her just personally. They didn't threaten us just as a country. Like there's gonna be their, blowback their, from their all. Their threat of us. is very general. Their it's, threat is actually not directed towards Pelosi. My interpretation, English is my fifth language, but from my understanding, they're saying if she shows up, she represents America. We have to retaliate, not to Pelosi. Like they're not gonna go slash her tires. They're gonna retaliate to us. That those who play with fire will perish by exactly. It. So, and those uh, that that's 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 a you know, that's a threat. But you, Pelosi doesn't go. How do you process it? Uh, she's going. Straight you one hundred percent think I'm she's just, going. I, yeah, she's I think going. Uh, she is going. I think her and Biden had a full on conversation, and they decided yes, you are going. You are going to so, show strength and go to Taiwan, and let's see what happens here. 
I don't think there's any question that President Biden and Nancy Pelosi had a conversation and they processed all the positives and negatives of doing this and they decided, go for it. And I'm sure there's going to be breaking news today that, because she, I think she's on her way right now. Are you aware of that? Yes, yeah, she's like, gone. She's on her way. It's not like, well, maybe next week. But I she's just, on her way. I, yeah, I thought that was a, uh, I thought they went and they have a refuel and that's like, and, so, I, and I get what you're saying, Pepe. So you guys, so it, okay, I understand and, it's ballsy. It's showing a message. Yeah. Is it worth? Because if they if they do step up to their threat, like you were just talking about, then what? We're willing to risk a war because this 85 I, I year old I, bitch wants to go to like Taiwan. I don't think. It's like, what that, are we? I don't think. Do no, be careful I, with that. I, be careful with that. You yeah. may not. We may not like her, but she's not an 85 year old bitch. She is the Speaker of the House. She is an American diplomat. We may disagree with her politically, but this is one of those. Tom, things. He's a comedian. He's just. Tom, I, but but no, but I, she took me off once. But, but that's <laughs> also. So that's also something that is very important is to understand. This is an picture. American thing. Yeah. And I'm not picking on yeah, you no. here. That's the type of mentality that is 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 dividing America. Not you, brother. Yeah, no. But like some 85-year-old bitch. No, an American diplomat is going to Taiwan Stop. to show you strength. You called a lot worse yeah. things than a bitch. I can so care less about let's her. Not act, look, I'm not the, defending the Nancy thing, Pelosi. The one thing that went saying, out a long time ago on this podcast is respect, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Let's set that aside. He's using it with his language. Go it, back to the point Trump you're making. When so Trump went to North Korea, I wasn't like some asshole went to... The President of the United States went to North Korea right. and stepped over but, the disengagement line, okay? Like, at some point, you have to put bipartisan politics aside and say, this is an American she, issue. This is not the... the you, you're, 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 so I your think she's going. So and she's I think, going. Yes. And right I, now, I'm looking at Bloomberg's story. Yes. So you were checking it. So Bloomberg, Pelosi poised to land in Taiwan as China rips provocative trip. Okay. And, okay. And... and, and and what do you think China is going to do? They're going to they send do, out some warships. Well, who knows? But, they're probably going to fly, fly some planes in the sky. Like they're going to send a message, but okay. it's going to be bluster. Yeah. Well, just, just hopefully it's well, not, a, not a virus that comes out of a wet market that comes here. Let's just hope well, that doesn't a, happen. I, I actually because if think that's a, off, that's a very valid oh, point. Oh, then right all of a sudden, there. like you know, COVID thirty. You actually comes have out a very accident. valid point. Yeah, right that's there. what I'm saying. So is it worth her going there? Like what? Like I, I just don't understand the, the the urge. Oh, just to make a it's message. Actually, that's a good question you're asking as well. It is a fair question to ask. It so, doesn't mean like uh, again, they the, the when the, when the press secretary was being interviewed, she said she's going for her own reasons. Like the 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 what's what's his name said this. I tell you exactly who said this. Saint Pierre, Jean Pierre. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm sorry. The guy said it. The, not uh, John Kirby. No. Um, well, because remember, the speaker for the the Pentagon came out and said we do not support Taiwan. Like we do not support Taiwan as a Thank you. as its own nation. Thank you. That's a big statement, by the Hell way. Yeah. Who said do not that, support by the way? Taiwan. John yesterday. Kirby, the speaker for the Pentagon. He said, yesterday. we do not support Taiwan. Do you realize like what the hell is going on? Hmm. It, it, you know, if they say we do not support Taiwan, what's next? Like imagine them coming out and saying, we do not support Israel. What do you mean we do not support Taiwan? We do not support Israel. We do not support. So this is a slippery slope on what could potentially happen next because you're bowing down and you're afraid. Mm -hmm. Now, Zero to give me your percentage of China. <laughs> this goes based on the question he asked because, again, this is dialogue here that we're having. So, go to um, uh, what is the likelihood of China retaliating? And I'm going to ask the question the following way What is the likelihood of China retaliating immediately versus China retaliating long term? So, if you were to say 10% chance they retaliate immediately. 90% chance they do something long term. What would you say those percentages are? I actually agree with those odds. 10 and 90? I don't, I don't think anything okay. short term Got is going to happen. I don't think there's going to be any the hot war. Yeah. I mean, and remember how they retaliate. You, we're, we're in a, <clears throat> there are three fronts to the alternative war. Conventional war is always last. And conventional war has got conventional war and then conventional nuclear war. Mm. Those are last. And then you have, you know, tech war, right? Cyber. Yeah. Exactly. All the cyber things you can do. Second, you have bio, mm -hmm. and then you have economic. Mm -hmm. And those are the three fronts in the new war. And what we really haven't seen is bio. But if you listen to any of the Pentagon speakers that talk about the modern threat matrix, mm -hmm. bio is out there because it's one of the most easiest to deploy. Um, and you would wait. You know, as I said long ago, revenge is a meal best served cold uh, to avoid, you know, to avoid another retaliation against you. And so that's that's a front, whether it's cyber or it's bio or economic. I think China's mm -hmm. going to retaliate. Does a virus fall under bio? 
Yes. Okay, yeah. so when Joe Biden goes, a second pandemic is definitely coming. This is the type of shit that makes another pandemic just randomly happen. Pat, and just just to clarify, you know when, like you know some people throw throw uh, throw away the word, "Hey bitch, bitch, bitch." When's the last, when you see Nancy Pelosi on stage in the State of the Union with Trump ripping, you know, speeches, when she talks to reporters, she's she acts like a bitch. When somebody goes, "Hey, you're insider. Do you ever give your, you know, your husband information?" Ah, whatever. She walks away. And I was in her office. Anybody that whips and handcuffs her husband to me is a That's bitch. True. But we don't have that they, kind of experience. You've been in the I office. Did. So I was in her office. You so you know, but <laughs> to, to your point, if those are the three uh, criteria for war, after those are the three more more exactly. likely forms of war before a hot war. To, okay, right. and you said before conventional war, which is correct, easy to end up in a in a stalemate. So see, see Ukraine. Here's my qu exactly. Uh, here's my question for the biz doc. You said um, economic, you said bio, and you said cyber. Correct. Aren't we already in a full on those three prong war with China? We're in an economic warfare with them right now. Bio. We talked about COVID. I mean, that's they've created war on the world. You know, I'm not even being PC here. It came from China. Still haven't, still right. haven't held them accountable, right. by the way. Still and, haven't held them accountable. And as far as, uh, what was the third? Cyber. Tech, cyber. We've been dealing with China, cyber hacking, Absolutely. all like Absolutely. for years now. So mm -hmm. whether you want to define it as a war or not, those are three things that we're already dealing with in China, especially the economic side of things. Oh, and I, recently, I, mm -hmm. now bio and cyber has been going on for a while. So, you know, newsflash, we're already at war with China. Correct. Uh -huh. And what they're talking about is elevated spikes of really damaging intensity. Guys, Reuters story just came up. Can you pull that up, please? This one here? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. The one I just sent. Oh, you pulled that up at the same time? That's yeah. crazy. I just texted to you. Yeah. Chinese warplanes take to skies. This just was given nine minutes ago, guys. This, this was this just went up a few minutes ago. U.S. warships on move before expected Pelosi visit to Taiwan. Well, and they're but they're buzzing the strait. They're not. They're not in the airspace. You see, rolling, buzzing the strait. That's been the Chinese thing. They're rolling armored vehicles down the. Like they. And I by, don't by think the way, this jump isn't evacuate and get home. People in bathing suits are just making room for the tanks. Look at this. That's right. hilarious. Latest footage circulating on Chinese social media WeChat shows. What is that? Armored vehicles on the move in southern Chinese city of. I think it's lots of show. Like they had a big parade, you know, showing their, you know, their well, soldiers and stuff like that. But I mean, you never know, right? I mean, this could be on the onion, right? Dope. It's like All right, Chinese so citizens. Bottom line, Pat, that, you okay with this move of her going to Taiwan? Well, we'll know in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not joking. I mean, this is. Yeah. Am I am I okay with it? Yeah. Let's ask the question a different way. Um, oh, interesting. For. The website of government of Taiwan also suffered a brief outage Tuesday due to yeah. cyber uh, attack. Weird. Or I don't think people would realize. Elevated spikes. Yeah. Yeah. Serious stuff. This says, so, so, you don't like this? We can do something bigger. Yeah, so, well, Tyler was going to say, I didn't, what would you say? No, I just, I don't think people realize how deeply entrenched and how powerful the Chinese are. Like, this isn't, we shouldn't be worried about the, the warplanes and the warships and the armored vehicles. No, they can take down whatever they want to take down at a minute's notice. They can literally stop the economy. So was, can we, though. They export I, we are so reliant on China. They, you don't they think will, we have the power like no, China does? No. Uh, under you don't this think administration? No. Under, under a person that's willing to put sanctions and play aggressive? Yes. You can't, a Biden cannot play, he cannot play those games. His personality is not that personality, bro. But that's, like, that, that's different from capabilities of what the United States can Pau can Gasol be the most dominant center in the league and all of a sudden get pissed off like Shaq and go throw around his weight? No. It's a different style, right? right? Pau's a different style than Shaq. But that, that's different. That's My question is capabilities, you know? No. Are, the Pentagon, regardless, still has the same exact capabilities There's, than they do under Obama, the, the, Bush, the, the Trump, word, the Biden. Word, the word capabilities is one thing. The other one is when a nation has been buying people up for decades and playing their politics game better than anybody else and getting so many of the major corporations relying on them to produce their products, their chips, everything, air conditioning, so many. We can go down. You know the list. We don't need this. Like a, a Pills, we, medicine. Yeah, so all of this stuff that they produce, yeah, no, it's the other way around. So um, respect to her for going. I, I'm not sure if the timing is a good timing. Why?
because you, w- the, the, this is interpretation. Say we have nothing. Say we're not. Say we pick a country that's got nothing to do with what's going on right now, and they're by themselves. Pick a country. Norway. New Zealand. New Ze- yeah. Okay. I was just it's just, they're just like sitting in New Zealand. There's a there's a podcast in New Zealand. What was that? Was it me? Oh shit! It's oh, the tea fell. Okay. Good. Say we got a podcast in New Zealand. And New Zealand's like, oh, shoot, what's going on? You know, what's going on over there with the U.S., China, all this other stuff? Here's what they're going to be saying. So let me get this straight. Um, first, you go after Ukraine. And Putin told you don't. And you guys try to get NATO to get close. So Ukraine could be, and they're on my southern border. And I told you don't do it because you want to have a better relationship with me. And then you go after Taiwan. What the hell are you guys doing? When when what did you say uh, two days ago with you and uh, Chris? I, we don't need to tell the whole story, but there was a one of your girlfriends, and he said the two week business. You know, you know what I'm a, talking about. It was about a business. It, arrangement. it was a business yeah. arrangement, right? But why was it a business arrangement? It's a revenge business arrangement. Yeah, we got to get even, right? Let's not get him. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to get into yeah. the story, but the point yeah. is, we got to get even, right? Okay, fair. Um, you don't think China and Russia are saying we got to get even now? I don't think timing was good. I think timing is a bit off of her. If it's for her legacy, whatever. She goes, they do whatever they do. She'll be able to write that in her book. Um, but but I think while Ukraine and Russia are still going on, and then you do it then, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know if I'm... Sequencing is key. I think this is out of whack sequencing. That's all I'm thinking about. Well, I think this raises a bigger question. Do we support Taiwanese independence? Do we support Taiwan as a sovereign country? What do you mean do we support that? For years we've been saying yes. All of a sudden you want to change it yesterday and say no? That's what I'm saying. Kirby came out and said, no, we don't. But but I, I believe Taiwan is very different than UK, Ukraine. I believe Taiwan is a serious ally. I believe their exports are monumentally important to the U.S., you can make it like I'm asking. Should we make a case? You're talking about huh? Semiconductors. Semiconductors, exactly. Like eight. It's absurd amount of semiconductors they export. And now imagine they stop exporting them. Everything stops. Technology ends. We're no more cars. Screwed. No more computers. No well, more fridges. Let's no go, more let's anything. Let's go a different right? direction with that. Imagine if China is controlling all of that, and we, people have been concerned about 5G. And I'm not talking about the conspiracy theorists talking about health. I'm talking about all of the 5G networks have been built with Chinese components that people have been concerned about embedded technology in those components that can route data back. And if you think that TikTok is bad with ByteDance and things going on there, and Joe Rogan said, yeah, the fine print just says all your data and all your keystroking is going to China. So if you think that's bad and 5G is bad, imagine if they control 80% of the world's semiconductor production. You don't think infiltration is easy, and you don't think it's it's a whole different level of espionage, whole different level. Yeah, I mean it's it's wild. So uh, it, again, this is no, why it's 70, 75 percent market share of semiconductor production. Is it's I, yeah, I was thinking it's got to be close to eighty, that, right? Yeah, it's it's crazy, and and this is why people were working so hard to make the case for it. don't don't send fifty billion dollars to Ukraine. Don't make Russia an enemy where we don't have to. We didn't. Russia saying we have your back, China was. It could have been prevented. We could have had Russia. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Russia and China were never meant to be allies. They they oppose each other, and they always will oppose each other when it comes down to it. But all we're doing is pushing Ukraine. Why do they oppose each other? I know that they're on each other's border, and they've had some longstanding issues. Because Ch- China wants to but do I things. I feel like we push them into each other's arms for decades now. We have. Okay. I'm so not this is anything new. No, but China sees you, Russia as its helpful nephew, not its son. That China sees Russia correct. as its nephew? Yeah, as a helpful nephew, right? Hmm. Not as not as their son, not as blood. They see it as uh, yeah, definitely they, they're going to help me out. They're using you ever played there's an old 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 board game that's really good that's had a surge in popularity called Diplomacy. And if you ever played that game and if anybody in the chat has played that game, that's what's going on right now, right? China is using Russia as this helpful force. That's what's going on here. Period. China's using Russia as a helpful helpful force. Yeah, like a helpful diplomatic force. And by the way, Russia's got tons of energy. China's got to get energy from somebody. That's one thing China doesn't have, right? Of all the things that China has, it does not have the ability with its size and scale to truly be energy independent. So it's got to have energy allies, period. 
Enter Russia. And Russia is, <laughs> is Russia its biggest energy? Oh yeah, ally? yeah. And Russia is is basically you look at look at look at German economy. They're they were worried that an ongoing conflict could result in natural gas shortages for two consecutive mm-hmm. winters. So Germany was very concerned about what was going on in Ukraine, and not from a political standpoint, but from a from a just a you know that the ability to have the energy to power Germany through the winter. Interesting. But also, I mean, you're familiar with what the Quad is? The Quad? The Quad. So no. basically there's an alliance between United States of America, uh, Japan, Australia, and India. I, I thought of this because you brought up New Zealand because you know, as you were like, oh, New Zealand doesn't have anything to do with this. I think of New Zealand as like a little nephew to uh, Australia. They've created something called the quad to basically deal with china's influence in the south china sea so there's a defense mechanism against china out there so i think the the the, the question remains here is what do we do about the china problem do we tell them you know we, we'll do what they say we don't uh, take a stand against them we're scared of their rhetoric we don't do something it's this is the question that is going to be basically we're going to have to answer for the next decades to come Russia, on the other hand, I mean, how many other countries other than the United States are supporting uh, Ukraine? The majority of them, no. A lot of countries, I right? Mean, it's not yeah. just the United States. No. I think the people, people for you know yeah. that are not familiar, but basically everyone in the EU has supported them by one way or another. Yeah. Absolutely. And we just okay. sent them what five hundred? How much did we send yesterday? Five hundred million? Yeah. Another we've sent, we've sent a good, uh, large couple chunk billion. of it. Let me read a couple the EU comments here. EU has provided uh, funds for sure. Let me read a couple comments here. So super chats. Anas, uh, China has U.S. by the balls. They do. Uh, they own our tech, have backdoor to it, and their army is strong. Our army does not know their gender. We, the American people, don't want a war. Let the politicians, kids, and them go. Uh, Vince said, we're in the end of days. Prepare your hearts. Uh, Jesus Christ is our Lord. Okay, great. Thank you, Vince. Thank you for that. Okay, Scott Rodriguez. Love this podcast. Seriously, best podcast on YouTube. Scott, you're the man. Scotty. Edward Snowden said we can shut any country down with a click of a mouse. Uh, Paul is back. This administration is tone deaf. Horrible instincts. People don't have enough to like uh, Trump, but at least his instincts were tuned in. Tom, you got it wrong with bricks. Uh, Drop U.S. dollar. America has been oppressing the world since 1991. Russia and China want to bring down the dollar and replace it with metals like gold, copper, and lithium. What do you think about that? That's part of the economic war, right? I think that's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And then Vince said, silver and gold are the only real mines left. I own $500,000 worth, and I hold it in my home. Don't fool yourself. Prepare now. Vince, make sure that doesn't target your house and people won't know where you're at. <laughs> What's your address? Yeah. <laughs> What's your address? Exactly. I'm going to come over for lunch. For a million dollars, I'll give you yeah. my address. Yeah. But the the, the first, local gang. I could use some more gold, baby. Yeah, why not? The first comment um, about how our military doesn't know if they're man or woman, I think that's a hyperbolic. Uh, yes, there is a little woke, little tiny problem yeah. going on. I don't think it's as bad. I think the people in the military, I have utmost respect for our uh, military community. And I think it's a disservice to be like, they're all woke and they're transgender. Yeah. All of us, like the, the, you've the served guys, in the military. The you've guys, served in the military. Yeah, but that's the, but he's got a point though. The guys doing the work may not, but the guys at the top are being too woke and too diplomatic. And yeah. military, there's a few things that shouldn't be diplomatic. Okay. <laughs> military should be, we're the military. That's it. Leave us alone. Get the hell out of here. You know, let us play the world that we play. You guys go play the business game, the money mm-hmm. game, the whatever stuff that you guys do. Let us do the war game. And then if you want to find out, come and join us. Mm-hmm. You know, see if you can handle this or not. But let us be, you do not want your military to be extremely sensitive walking on eggshells. That's yeah. the last thing you want. Like the last thing you want, right? And there's a few other places you don't want that to be the case. So there is a part of the comment he's making that he's right. We're trying to please too many people. China could care less about what you think about them. Get in line. Get an order. This is the formation. You're fighting for your country. America's the enemy. 
Protect it. That's what matters. Let's make sure China becomes the greatest country in the world by 2025. That's it. That's their vision. America's like, well, look, yes. You know, this whole concept about America is the greatest country in the world, we don't know. Maybe it is somewhere else. Maybe it's Chile, you know. Maybe it is China. Maybe it is, oh my gosh, stop it. There's power in affirmations, and China's winning the affir- affirmation game right now uh, with their own people. America's not winning the affirmation game right now. Do you know what I mean by the affirmation game? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Words have power is what you're saying. Words have a lot of Limiting power. Limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs. Absolutely. Okay, so monkeypox. All right, let's talk about this. Interesting. It's, you know, some thought it wasn't going to get a lot of attention. Some are saying it is getting attention now. So New York City officials declare mon- monkeypox a public health emergency. This is an MSN story. New York City officials declare monkeypox a public health emergency on Saturday in an effort to respond more efficiency, efficiently to the current outbreak, which may begin in May, which began in May. San Francisco was the first U.S. city to declare a state of emergency to combat the monkeypox outbreak last week. In a joint statement, New York City Mayor Eric Adams and Dr. Ashwin Vassan, Commissioner of the City Health and Mental Hygiene Department, said that New York is currently the epicenter of the monkeypox outbreak in the U.S. and the estimate that about approximately 150,000 New Yorkers may currently be at risk of them. By the way, only 5,800 cases. What are they talking about? Both officials also said that the outbreak must be met with urgency, action, and resources, both nationally and globally, and that the declaration reflected the seriousness of the moment. As of August 1st, the New York City Health Department has reported 1,472 cases of monkeypox. I heard a couple of things uh, this morning when I was listening to the news. Uh, First of all, they only have 300 and I think 50 uh, vaccines available for it. It doesn't kill you. and It's only really, really rampant in the gay community, which I don't even know how, like, it just popped out of nowhere. The guy was like, it's not like an AIDS. It's not going to kill anybody. So it's not like, it shouldn't be like, oh my God. But they have... They have limited amount of vaccines for this, even though we do have some. And there's only so, one small, is it Dutch? I may get that wrong. One I, small Dutch comp, company that's actually... Uh, that makes it? Has, has it? a marketed... The chat can correct me, or Tyler, you can look that up, but I think there's only one small Dutch company that's making the vaccine. Oh, really? I got to tell you. We got to invest in that on them. Tom, let's, let's get on that. I don't, I don't call it like COVID fatigue, whatever. <laughs> Like I'm, I, I'm hearing about, I'm just like I don't got no, ain't nobody got no time yeah. for your monkey pox. Uh, <laughs> I ain't got, no, I ain't got to go to the fucking yeah. zoo. <laughs> I don't got, yeah, I'm not dealing with smallpox, yeah. monkey pox. Yeah, I'm done. I'm not dealing with two pox. I'm like tired. none of it, I'm yeah. dealing with. I'm done. I like, I'm I see done. the monkey pox pop up. I'm like, all right, keep it moving. I mean, what no, else I'm is not going to front though. I did see some videos about where the guy, some guy was like on a uh, world star and he was talk, bro. It looks really really bad i wouldn't want it i'm sure but he was just like yeah man i just you know i was at a uh it was a weird story it's like i was at a i, I don't i'm not trying to be funny yeah. it was at like a, at a sexual orgy type situation he goes you know i was making out with a bunch of guys and i got it and then he goes like eight other guys in the place got it and he a goes, guy all all guys it, well, it's, it's rampant can, in the you read, community. can you can you pull up the article out? well yeah i was going to show you this these are the vaccine requirements in new york city you can only be vaccinated if you meet the following conditions gay bisexual or other man who yep. has sex with men 18 or older have had multiple or uh, anonymous sex partners in the last 14 days um you should consider getting vac- uh, vaccinated mm-hmm. if you met partners through online applications such as grinder tinder or have a condition that may increase your risk for severe death if infected with monkeypox such as hiv is there a phone number for this? Why or? is this a public emergency? Like maybe in New it's, York, I get it, but you're gonna see. So I think you're just so, York, again, pull up, I, pull up I, that article, please. I, I just said uh, this is not something I'm, being, I'm paying attention to, but this seems to be running rampant in the gay community. Yes. Is that yeah, what's going what on? Said. Yeah, specifically yeah. men. Yeah, okay. which is kind of I don't even well, know what it comes out of. Like, here, wow. Guys, here's a CM. When's the last time you would you would expect C? No, show the logo at the top left so they know who. Uh, are, this is a it's CNBC NBC. story. Mm-hmm. World Health Organization recommends gay and bisexual men limit sexual partners to reduce the spread of monkeypox. <laughs> Zoom in a little bit to read some of this. Zoom in a little bit to read some of this. Men who have sex with men are the highest risk of infection right now for monkeypox. About 99% of cases are among men, and at least 95% of those patients are men who are having sex with other men, according to World Health Organization Tedros. Said men who have sex with men should consider limiting their sexual partners to lower their risk of infection and reduce their spread. The World Health Organization chief called on media, public health authorities, and government to fight stigma and discrimination, which he said will only fuel the outbreak. Well, there goes my weekend. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. I just messing around. But yo, like, it, it just came out of nowhere. Huh? But, but they, notice how they were trying to make it like it was another pandemic. No. It's not, bro. It's only targeting a certain well, group. Did, and it's can like, you scroll back? Did it say 99% of cases are with... Uh, are, are men hooking up with men? 
scroll yeah, it's, nine it's guys yeah i mean i'm not even being sarcastic no, not being i'm not guys. like if you're a gay man slow down and this is what you're dealing and this is <laughs> yeah. that you should be concerned yeah 100 percent. and i i implore you to act accordingly yeah okay nobody wants anybody to get sick nobody nope. wants to get these diseases um you're at risk yep for the for the other you know rest of us carry on exactly keep you're calm good. and carry on you're good Oh my God! Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's what, talk. What, what, what? No, you're gonna have to address yeah, what like that that's frustration fatigue was. Too, bro. It's like I, yeah. we're tired. I don't want to hear any more about. Okay, there's something else. Like what? Am Pat, I, go, reveal what the frustration no, was, no, please. No, I'm not going to. But it's 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 um, it's it's a little bit too much right now, man. This is just ridiculous. What what they're doing? The topic the topic in common sense and walking on eggshells is out of control. Yep. Mm -hmm. today of what people have to i can't even believe what i just read right now is what i'm reading like this is this has become normal but hey at least uh, we can identify what a man is yeah i mean no, that's I'm, not, I'm not i'm not even going in that direction but it's like yeah uh <laughs> let's just let's just go to this other story about uh uh, uh, uh in, in, very very, <laughs> very Pat very is very nice. rarely like at a loss for words in the brain yeah. like, monkey wrench great, monkey great wrench. play on words <laughs> monkey wrench with a monkey pot no like I got a lot to say yeah but I'm not gonna say nothing but I got a lot to say and I'm not gonna say nothing in this topic here uh, you just we just read it for you now you're informed good for you make the right decision folks okay yeah. be smart all right Schumer uh, uh, let's talk about the mansion mansion says Republicans in normal times will be supporting energy health and health care bill this is a CNN story Democrat Senator Joe Manchin argued Sunday that Republicans would in normal times support an energy and health care bill. He recently negotiated with, lead, with uh, leaders of the party. I think it's a great uh, piece of legislation. And on normal times, my Republican colleagues would have been uh, 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 something such as this. We basically pay down the debt, which is what they want. We've accelerated permitting, which is what they want. And we've increased production of energy, which is what they want. We've done things that we should be doing together. Manchin also defended a provision in a bill that would impose a 15% minimum tax on certain corporations. These are the bigger corporations out there. And they said taxes won't be going up, but uh, I think it is going up. Schumer Manchin uh, deal raises taxes on earners under $400,000. The energy and health care bill from Manchin and Schumer would raise taxes on millions of Americans earning less than $400,000 annually. Uh, Senate Republican says, citing nonpartisan data, the Congressional Joint Committee on Taxation found that taxes would jump by $16.7 billion on American payers, making less than $200,000 in 2023, and raise another $14.1 billion on taxpayers who make between two to $500,000. During the 10-year window, the average tax rate would go up for most American categories by 2031. No, new energy credits and subsidies would have people earning less than $400,000 uh, pay as much as two-thirds of the additional tax revenue collected this year. The measure would raise $739 billion over a 10-year span with much of money coming from a 15% corporate minimum tax rate. Okay, what are your thoughts on this with Manchin? Well, it just goes to show that Joe Manchin controls the United States right now, okay? So. Uh, he shot down uh, Biden's Build Back Better deal, that $2 trillion uh, proposed uh, bill that uh, went nowhere. And him and Chuck Schumer behind closed doors worked this out. So uh, it's basically a skinny down version of the Build Back Better deal. And listen, whether you like it or not, this is a win for the Biden administration, okay? Biden's had a pretty good week, you know, despite having COVID twice in the past uh, two weeks. Killed the, uh, what's uh, Osama bin Laden's number two guy, yeah, Wahiri. You should get sick and do nothing more often. Okay, hey, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm a big fan of Joe Manchin and, uh, you know, what do they say? Killers move in silence. And he's he's a straight killer. He's He's the type of person that we need more of in this country willing to work behind closed doors and put your partisan aside. I've always said this and I'll say it again. Any Democrat that can consistently get elected in the reddest state in the country, watch what that man is doing. There's some magic to Manchin and uh, he did it again. Tom. I, I think this is an old school bill uh, in the, you know, if you, if you read your history, old school Congress used to always ask, how are you going to pay for that? Right. How are you going to pay for that? Because the automatic just flopping over and in, in, Paling the, the the national debt with more debt wasn't automatic. They 
they took great care in there, and they took great care about raising the debt ceiling. They weren't so laissez-faire about it, where they debate, threaten to shut down the government for three weeks, and then they raise the debt ceiling anyway. This is an old-school bill, and he's to pay for these things. We mm-hmm. need these things. And, uh, you know, I think the bill was kind of balanced because there's a corporate tax on it and there's also a change to income tax. So he's like, everybody needs to pay for this. And I think that's probably how Schumer, that's probably the, the tax for everybody is how Manson agreed to it because Schumer's not a tax guy. Schumer just wants the program spending that's in it. Mm-hmm. And he, Manson was like, hey, we got to adjust it with taxes so that this thing kind of pays for itself. That's twice. <laughs> so it's like... That's what I think about it. I think it's you an old the, school bill where they're actually yeah. they're actually being responsible, with PBD. Benny, where they're I, like, "Hey, we got some programs over here, and people are going to pay for it." You, you know what tax I like? The wealthy they taxed everybody, you know including I, corporates. You know what I like about what Brett Burr asked him? He said, uh, "Well, what are you going to do if they come back and they do this and they do that and they do this?" He says, "Well, let me tell you what I told uh, President Biden uh, about this bill. If you have to keep your word, and I have to keep my word." If they do their part and I do my part, everything's going to be fine. But if they don't, I've shown my track record that I'm not going to vote on certain things. So they have to do their part and keep their word. I thought it was pretty impressive that he publicly also put it out there that, hey, you play too much politics. I'm not playing the games when it comes down to these types of policies. Vinny. While you you read that, all that kept hitting me is because I'm the under 400,000. I'm under the 200,000. It just keeps going up. Right, it's saying it's going to go up, and then it's going to go back. Two thousand twenty-three, they're going to raise it another fourteen billion, another ten-year window. It's going to go up another. So it's everybody that's under four hundred thousand is just going to be getting taxed over and over and over and over. Right, that's that's all I'm seeing is that the it's not just the rich now. They're they're going to tax the shit out of everybody. It's uh, yes, uh, 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 it's a sixteen point seven billion dollar American taxpayers making less than two hundred thousand dollars in twenty twenty-three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, so, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sixteen point seven billion is money. It is they're being taxed. There's no question about it. How much? You know, very minimal. But you're gonna be your your taxes went up. Went up. Okay. If number one, if it passes, we've all learned that there's a big if. But let me just read this. Is called it's called the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. The big winner right here is that 15 percent corporate tax. I know you're not necessarily a big fan of that. I assume, but uh, polling states. You know, I I don't know the number. I think 70 percent of Americans agree with that. Um, Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, 369 billion for energy security and climate change. So for the greenies out there, that's a big deal for you. Reduce carbon emissions by 40% by 2030. Medicare to negotiate drug prices. I think there's a 90% agreement in this country that uh, drug prices should go down. So that's a big win right there. Um, Extending Obamacare subsidies, what have you. Uh, and then the 15% corporate minimum tax. And then there was one more that I think is, um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, oh, the IRS funding of the tax police. Okay. That's how they're going to basically, essentially a lot of these big corporations who have been skirting these loopholes, they're the ones who are going to be paying the grunt of this. If you just want to use sheer numbers right here, $740 billion is going to be from the corporations. 16 billion by American taxpayers here. So the big dogs, the Amazons of the world, the fang stocks that we talked about, the tech sector, they're the ones paying this bill. But what do you think is going to happen when they raise, what is, would you say, 740 billion by corporations? Yeah. What do you think those corporations are going to do? They're going to raise their prices. Raise their prices. Yeah, so the American taxpayer is paying for this any way you slice it. Mm-hmm. Like any way you cut That's it, the American point. taxpayer yeah. is paying. Double. For two yeah. ways raising prices and laying off people. Yeah. That's that's what happens. Yeah. Like, Raising I, prices and laying off. There See, are parts of this that I think are absolutely a win for the Biden administration. But three hundred and sixty nine billion dollars to climate change. <laughs> what would you spend? <laughs> nothing. Okay. Absolutely well, nothing right now. Zero. Zero. I would fix the problems that matter. The economy as it stands right now. I would. So help. you're basically saying that climate change doesn't matter. Right now, that's cool. That's no, your opinion. I, that's I don't great. believe cr- climate change is America's biggest worry right now. I don't think. I don't, I, I mean, today, I, as I, I, think there's, I think there's three patients that just rolled into the emergency room. They got a climate change guy they've been working on. You got a guy who just had a heart attack. The heart attacks the economy. You got to fix a heart attack guy. Yep. You're not ignoring mm-hmm. the climate change guy, but the guy you got to get after is the guy with the heart attack, and that's the economy. I agree. It's not, it's not like, I, I, don't, I don't think it's binary, and I don't mm-hmm. think people are saying it's binary. I'm not saying it's binary, but I'm not a, I'm not a climate freak. 
but I agree that it's good if we change what we're putting into the water and the air over time. Mm-hmm. I agree with that, but I'm not a climate freak. Hey, let's talk about what's going on with Fox News and Trump. Okay, so very interesting story that's uh, being talked about by a lot of different people. I don't know how much credibility there's behind this, but you're seeing some of it. Fox News owner uh, Rupert Mur- Murdoch is cooling on Donald Trump, reports say, amid wider signs of discontent. This is an insider story. Uh, Murdoch has lost his enthusiasm for Trump, the Washington Post reported Sunday, citing several associates of, of Murdoch. The Post said that Murdoch's enthusiasm was ebbing away, driven partly by the congressional hearing on the January 6th riot at the U.S. Uh, Capitol. A shift in Murdoch's favor long seen reflected in approving coverages from outlets like Fox News and the New York Post could be unwelcome should Trump choose to run for president 2024. The Post cited its sources as signs appeared of a turn against Trump in the wake of January 6th hearing, uh, both uh, New York Post and Wall Street Journal published sca- scathing editorial uh, admonishing Trump's behavior. Spokesman for News Corp, the umbrella company for several of Murdoch's businesses, declined to comment on the report. So do you think this is real or do you think this is uh, another propaganda the market is uh, creating to say that his own people are turning against him? Adam. No, I think turning against okay, him. Okay, go ahead, Tom. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Tom. I think turning against him is a stronger word than what's really happening. Lost their enthusiasm. You know, I I could see them. It's like, come on, dude, you know, let's uh, let's tone it down a little bit. I mean, I could see Murdoch taking that. And that it is true that those, remember, editorial is the opinion of the editor of the paper. That is like the president of the paper representing it. So when they write an editorial, not an article, about January 6th and about other behaviors, that's the paper speaking and that's the paper's owner speaking. So that interpretation I think is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, well, number one, you know, Trump got elected because of his uh, masterful use of social media. I mean, there's a a, a laundry list. He was a troll. I'm not, okay, sure. That's the personality side of things, no doubt. But he was a master of marketing. Like Trump, don't like Trump, you know, you, you have to be willing to acknowledge the fact that the guy is a master marketer mm-hmm. and what he was able to do on Twitter and social media and Facebook and ads and all that. But now he doesn't have any of that. He's off of Twitter. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Is he he's still, still banned? He's still banned. Oh, yeah. shit. Uh, Elon Musk did not buy Twitter. You know, I don't <laughs> want to break the news to anybody. That's still in legal proceedings. Uh, he's not on YouTube. You put up something with Trump on YouTube, that thing gets taken down. Yeah. We saw what happened with the Nelk Boys interview. Yeah, they only to talk. He's not on YouTube. You know, he's not on Facebook. He doesn't have... Uh, he just had truth, in- truth social. Exactly. Yeah. And if you're in that truth social siphon, uh, yeah. you know, you're going to believe whatever Trump says anyway. Yeah, you love and him. You're a tr- exactly. So now... So we all know where, where Trump stands with big tech. He's, he's off of it, basically. But now, in terms of legacy media, mainstream media, if Fox News owned by the Murdoch family, mm-hmm. is basically saying, and I'm just taking this from yeah. his, you know, yeah. what he's going at face value here, if Rubach, Rupert Murdoch is off of the Trump bandwagon, that's not very helpful for Trump, especially if you want to mix that with being off of social media. And don't forget, Rupert Murdoch's sons, I think, have come out and have been very outspoken against yeah. Trump. They are not fans of his. Especially if Trump year. has any hopes of win- winning the White House, because I, I think mm-hmm. we all think he's running again, how's he going to do it without Fox by his side? And how's he going to do it without I, any of the social media? I don't know, but, 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 the, but being banned on Twitter, Twitter might help him. The fact that he's not going to be able to say stupid shit it might actually <laughs> help him. I'm being serious. He won't be able. That's why I said, remember, I think the last time Pat, I go, if he didn't have thumbs, Trump would still be the president. Because mind you, I still don't think it's him tweeting, Tom. It's somebody else. Some like millennial that's like I'm gonna. It's like a Takashi. No, it's nine. it's him. I think you it's re- definitely one hundred percent. Absolutely. Honestly, yeah. But I think that's a really important point, Vinny. If yeah. Trump okay. wasn't on Twitter or tweeted half as much, I yeah. think he'd still be president. Thank you. That's one hundred percent, bro. One hundred percent. So yeah. this might this this yeah. this man might actually right. help him because yeah. it's just gonna be on Truth Social. You want to hear him? Go to Truth Social. He can still, say whatever the hell he wants. If he still had Twitter, he'd still be president. That's okay. I agree with yeah, you. you, know that. If you yeah, and if my aunt had a penis, she'd be my uncle. So it is what it is. Did she know? <laughs> is this, how you you're becoming a big fan of that phrase, phrase Adam. Adam. I'm just saying. 40, yeah. 42 years like, later, the truth yeah. is out. <laughs> or, 41, 42 years later. Yeah. Or she'd have an NCAA Anyway, do you think... Do you think so here's my exactly. question to you. Without any of the social media yeah. networks allowing him to come back, he's banned from all the big networks, you know, all the big tech companies. Yeah. And if he doesn't have Fox 
can Trump, can Trump still win in 2024 without those outlets covering him? So, so let me give you what's happened the last seven years. This is my opinion again. Uh, six years ago, we were all sitting on November 3rd, whatever time it was, 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, Central Standard Time. And you're, if you're still up, you're like, what the hell? You? Tom and I were on the phone for three hours. Do you remember that call? Totally. And we were, we're looking like, at the, uh, there was a New York both Times. Both of us. Yeah, the first one. yeah, you told me to New York. I'm like, he's like, Patrick, this is actually happening. I'm like, what are you saying? You're saying when Trump beat Hillary. Because okay. nobody, like, listen, he, he, people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And then you're like, yeah. And then when he walked up, the look on his face, we're like, oh, shit, we won. <laughs> it was such an interesting mm-hmm. walk. Then the next day he got to work. You're like, everybody's sitting there at the White House hoping this guy's going to take a month like most people do to relax. And nah, like, let's get to work. It's like, yeah. oh, shit, this guy actually works. Yeah. Okay, that's a problem. We don't like working presidents. We like golfing presidents. We like guys that are not working. This guy wants to work right off the bat. And Romney was coming in for an interview, and all these guys were walking. Do you remember that whole thing when it was all over TV? Totally. Like, oh, damn. What just happened here? And then Russia story comes out, and you're like, oh, shoot, this guy. That's yeah. how he won. Yeah. Got it. Uh, yeah, exactly. He won because and then you're like, yeah, Russia was a hoax story. Oh, and Hillary Clinton, 35. Oh. What a freaking derp. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. And then you're like, dude, there's no way Biden's winning. He goes and he talks. <laughs> 32 people show up. There's no way this guy's winning. And you're like. On a folding what? chair in a backyard. He's ran a couple times in the past, and the highest he ever got was 1%. And the next thing you know, Elizabeth Warren drops out, Pete drops out, you know, Bernie drops out, everybody drops out, like uh, Amy drops out. Wait, Biden's the president? Yeah, Biden's the president. And they go, what? What are we talking about here? So, you know, well, COVID came from a bad market. Well, we now know it's not the bad. So, so, so many things have happened that you in the moment you're like well here's what's going on and then a year and a half later like oh i got it it was just kind of so listen we have no clue what's going to happen here with trump uh what i would say is him losing fox elon and twitter i don't think it helps the reason for it is the following reason as much as we say if he didn't have twitter he wouldn't if there wasn't twitter trump's also not president because what made trump win is his ability to troll and everybody was so interested in what he had to say so the the five moments that got him in trouble were you know followed by 500 moments that got him billions of eyeballs that just wanted to hear him so i do think if he loses fox i don't think this is good because uh you know if you lose fox you can't get on youtube you can't get on i don't know i don't know how many more outlets you got and maybe what they're trying to do is to eliminate him to position desantis but uh just 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 Remember this, for those that are already acting like they know it all, the same camp that was so certain Trump was going to lose is part of the same camp that was so certain he was involved with Russia, is part of the same camp that was so certain Biden was going to lose, is part of the same camp that everybody's got it wrong the yep. last six years. Yep. So he could still end up winning and he could still end up losing and... You just can't be the person that's kind of saying, well, yeah, here's what's going to happen because that's what you hope it happens. Correct. Versus here's what could happen, even though I don't hope that happens. So you have to be able to be logical enough to say what you want to see happen could be wrong versus what actually ends up happening. I don't know if I'm making sense or not, but we are living in very weird times on what happens next. Well, let's not forget, I think, Adam, you've said this before. The, what's the best thing that can happen to CNN? Trump. Trump. Coming back. Mm-hmm. Money talks. Ratings talk. Yep. It's still They're early. Begging for him. That, oh, they'll get. The, they'll give him all the footage that he needs. You re, you really think that Fox, MSNBC, CNN are going to turn down those ratings? No way. No way. That, Good point, yeah. Tyler. We'll see if the Murdoch uh, clan. What do we got? Boys. We got nine minutes. We got two stories. Which one you want to do? You want to do Navy Day? Putin says United States main threat. You want to do China shadows looming? You want to do Amber Heard sells her house? You want to do Prince Charles, 1.2 million Osama bin Laden? You want to do the person that won the jackpot? What do you want to do? Pick. You want to do the uh, Saudi Arabia story? Which one do you want to do? Pick Beyonce. one. Beyonce? Out of everything I didn't say, <laughs> I don't know yeah, he picks Beyonce. He picks, he picks Beyonce. Another, another example of someone apologizing. Wherever you want to go, PBD. Tiger Woods, billionaire. By Tiger the way. Woods? I mean, I love Tiger. Nothing I thought Tiger was already a billionaire. There's nothing there, man. There's nothing there. Nothing. None of those stories. No, no, no. I mean, Tiger Woods billionaire. There's nothing there. I okay, mean, he's so he's got investments. He's got sponsors. He's, he's, he's been fine. a lot of things going on. 
and it's added up and incur- do we want to at dollars. least finish it on a high note like trump sympathy note towards biden like do we want to finish it with like a uh Did i like s- to know the comedy s- writer that wrote that <laughs> it was a sympathy note the trump the Pick a story all right let's do the trump uh trolls yeah. uh covid uh yeah. stricken biden if you want to pull that up uh, speaking uh, of saying crazy stuff without twitter yeah, yes. so uh, President Joe Biden's last positive COVID test again uh, confined him to the White House for the second time in the last two weeks, earning him the sympathy of many who are sending the sideline leader get well wishes, including the pres- uh, uh, former president who dashes off a doozy of a sympathy note. On Sunday, Joe Biden's second bout of COVID, sometimes referred to as China virus, was sadly misdis- misdiagnosed by his doctors. <laughs> he instead has dementia. <laughs> But is happily recovering well. Joe is thinking of moving part time to one of those beautiful Wisconsin nursing homes where almost 100% of the residents miraculously and for the first time in history had the strength and energy to vote, <laughs> even if those votes were cast illegally. Get well soon, Joe. Where I mean, was, come on, yo, Pat, where was this I'm posted? Guys, Wait, where was this posted? Where was this posted? And how, that is so freaking How funny. many issues in where just he, those many words? Yeah, wait, I thought he was banned from Twitter. How did no, this, that's truth. This is true. Oh, this true social. soldier. Bro, how funny Again, is that? Again, his message will get out. It doesn't yeah, matter no, where sure. you, people will come. Well, okay, okay, Pat, honest to God, you think, okay, <laughs> listen, it's funny. It kind of sounds like him. You think he really, that's, per, as a comedian, that is freaking hilarious it's misdirection he's kicking his ass on four different points and then and then he's still putting in the illegally vote and he goes get well soon <laughs> so that's just brilliant <laughs> trolling bro like hate him like how <clears throat> hilarious is that that's a really good written joke that's hilarious <laughs> It's hilarious. You know, you know what it is. It's like the the breakfast. What is the breakfast thing they do uh, when the president gets up there and they say cuss like they're making oh, yeah, fun of yeah. themselves? What um, is that thing called? You the, know, the, the Washington the, correspondence. The, the Washington there. correspondence. Yeah, yeah. Then he says, "You know, uh, earlier uh, Hillary uh, uh, was walking around and you know she bumped into me." <laughs> And uh, she said, pardon me. And I said, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's good. They're, they're, they're that's like, brilliant. That's brilliant. There, and, and, and then Hillary gets up and she says, look, I, I, you know, it, it's always great to have a, uh, a person that came out of New York, a strong personality, a businessman, a billionaire. Uh, let's make some noise for uh, uh, Mayor Bloomberg, who's in the house here. With us. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> it's the best when they go back and forth. But listen, as much as this was probably written by somebody else, I think so. it was inspired by only oh, one person, Donald, and Trump. Donald mm-hmm. J. Trump. Like, if 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 Joe Biden sent a tweet like this, you oh. wouldn't even laugh because yeah. you're like, first of all, Joe, you would never in your life yeah. say something like 100%. this. Okay. Because he hit. Look, Pat, look at all the points. So he yeah. hit, he hit COVID being the China virus that they all you know science was wrong. Yep. Right. Then he goes say he does have dementia, but he's hope he's doing good. And then he goes all those people <sighs> in the home that miraculously voted for the first time that they got the strength to go out and vote. Well, that's let, just come on. By the way, great podcast today, folks. It, 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 many of you guys message me and you say, Pat, I like the interview, but I also like it when you do this format. If you like the format of us just commentating every once in a while, give us a subscribe and uh, give it a thumbs up to the podcast today. A couple things I do want to share with you guys for you to be thinking about. Number one, I'm doing a private insider webinar today at 4 p.m. for those that are part of valuetainment.com's insider community. If you are an insider member, you and I will be together today at 4 o'clock. For those who are not, we have a whole social media community within valuetainment.com where people talk to each other, entrepreneurs, businessmen, businesswomen from around the world. We have networking going on right now all over the place on valuetainment.com. If you're not yet an insider member, you can go to valuetainment.com. Join the insider membership. I'm doing Q&A, Q&As today at 4 p.m. We're and also- outside of that, we're having a vault conference that's also coming for up. for YouTube members, too. For, oh, it's for yeah. YouTube members as well? Valuetainment.com and YouTube members. Oh, so YouTube insiders get invited to that as well. Yep, so if you're Fantastic. an insider member, just go to the PBD That's PBD excellent. That's great to know. So, so it's valuetainment.com insider as well as YouTube insiders are invited to that as well. Uh, phenomenal. And then last but not least, I'm, I can't tell you how much I can't wait to see many of you at this year's vault conference. I, we have so many ridiculous announcements but more than ever before there's there's not been a time more important to, than today in my opinion during these times for you to recreate yourself and go into the next phase that we're going into mm-hmm. unknown territories okay 2023 nobody has any clue what's going to be happening uh whether it's the business climate mortgage real estate finance economy 
uh, uh, f- challenges that's uh, foreign. We got election that's coming around the corner. These are very weird times. New Congress coming. New Congress coming. E- e- policies are about to change. Things are about to change. And those who are able to adapt and are prepared for it will most likely have the highest odds of uh, capitalizing during these times. I had a conversation with somebody the other day, and, and this person was a, a person from the insurance industry, and they said, look, we're bringing our entire crew. They're bringing like 25 of their guys that are coming to this event, but guys are bringing their entire sales force. One of the guys I talked to, he says, man, I, I can't make it this year. I'm probably going to come next year. And I said, you know, to be honest with you, I don't think you're ever coming. For three years you've been saying this, and I think the problem isn't that you're coming next year. The problem is, you have a tendency of saying to everybody, you're eventually going to do it next year. Your problem is a procrastination uh, problem. I never want to go into a new year without certain things that are the unknown. Let me explain. I'm currently, we just uh, uh, signed a uh, uh, deal with uh, my uh, next business book being published. I'm very excited about it. We'll be announcing this here soon. Published with uh, a, a massive publisher. We'll be announcing the details of this book here soon. And I'm getting my fiction book that's being published. And that's going to be coming out in 2024. The business book's coming out Q4 of 2023. Okay. And then outside of that, we got a couple companies that we're investing in. Vitamin Investment Group is doing big things. We got some announcements that we'll be making to you. And then there are certain, I mean, I, I wish I could say, you know, four of these things. There's a lot of surprises, but the moral of the story is the following. I never, ever, ever want to go into a new year without any new unknowns. And the only way you have unknowns is by you recreating yourself. So if you haven't yet registered to go to the vault, I would love to spend two and a half days with you by uh, being with the folks that we're having. Robert Kiyosaki is going to be there. Uh, my uh, good friend Kevin Connolly will be there from the entourage. He'll be there. Uh, we're going to have uh, Chas Palminteri from Bronx Tale doing his 90-minute script. He's going to play Exciting. every role from the – this is a Broadway show that you're going to see performance. Wow. Good friend Frederick De Silva, top illusionist, uh, will be there as well. And I think we have also uh, – uh, anyways, a couple other people will also Andy, be there. Uh, Andy Fastow, yeah, exactly. who was the CFO. They did a documentary on that one of freaking Academy. CFO of Enron. CFO Enron. of Enron that right. caused a 100,000 employee company to go out of business. And he's got a complete – different version of the story i think he went to jail for eight years even his wife i think went for a minute he's going to be sharing what happened during that time you may want to hear that side of the story mm-hmm. so you don't kind of go through it yourself now if you haven't yet registered for the vault uh the website is the vault conference.com once again the vault conference.com it'll be in miami at the diplomat from august 31st to september 3rd and our entire crew will also be here Sick. adam will be there Vinny will be there mm-hmm. tom will be there mario everybody will be there We'll see you guys in Miami. Pat, Having said that, uh, Pat, can I say one thing? Yes, sir. I have. Sorry to cut you off. I have a one. My podcast, Funny How, launches today at one p.m. Oh, Eastern damn. Same time. And I'm gonna look at the camera. Warn guys. This is brilliant. People, money. Uh, mine is just gonna be comedy and outlandish stuff. I'm oh just warning gosh. everybody. It's gonna be. It's purely comedy. If it's gonna you be were insane. offended by the word bitch, bitch, I suggest you not go, go. watch it. <laughs> exactly. Oops, but it's on so, Valuetainment Comedy at one p.m. Yeah. Okay. All right, gang. Have a great day. And I think we're doing this again. Today's what? Today's Thursday. Thursday, Thursday with Zuby. Oh, we're doing Thursday with Zuby. Zuby's yeah. going to be on Thursday. Yeah. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.